The Newcastle Castle Keep is a medieval fortification that continues to stand tall within the heart of a bustling city. A place of great history tainted by the many gruesome evil events that have made it so haunted. Yeah, so this building that you're in now is uh, called the Castle Keep. This is the central tower um, of what was the castle of Newcastle upon Tyne. That's where the name Newcastle comes from. And it's a 12th century stone tower. It's one of the last relatively intact castle keeps of this type left in the country. So the building here, it was completed 844 years ago, so the year 1178. Uh, it stands on the site of an earlier wooden castle, which was built in around 1080 by the son of William the Conqueror. And that is standing on top of an Anglo-Saxon church and cemetery from built around the 8th century, so around the 700s AD. And that is built on top of and stands in the grounds of uh, a Roman fort that was part of Hadrian's Wall. Um, so it has a considerable kind of history of new buildings being built on top of the old. I mean, it has a kind of general reputation for being a haunted building and a lot of people are aware that it has uh, quite a grisly history as well so the castle keep itself was built as a kind of royal palace but very quickly comes to be used as a sort of staging post for invasions of Scotland to like a military location and later on it's heavily used as a prison as well so this is a, a prison courthouse on site and even uh, the site of a number of executions and things it was the site of 18 hanging drawings and quarterings on a single day um, in 1528 and um, when a whole outlaw gang were hanged, castrated, disemboweled um, and had their body parts mounted up on the roof of the keep um, as a warning to others. Newcastle Castle has stood the test of time, a figure to remember the past and those who came before us. But do some of the castle's past occupants still remain? The countless ghost stories about the keep seem to suggest that they do. From the footsteps, mists and apparitions people cite, to the entity that takes people over in the dungeon and attacks on visitors by the unseen, there is more than meets the eye at this location. Some of the stories that you get um, from uh, groups who've come in to investigate are things like people seeing uh, shadowy shapes, particularly from the galleries of the castle keep. Some people have even got photographs of these shapes. Chanting monks, which I think is a classic ghost story for any medieval site really. It is a really creepy place at night. I've been over, I've stayed overnight here a number of times. Um, I've worked here for over 10 years now. It's pretty grim. I've had some, some of those horrible feelings of like, you know, that you just don't want to be in a place anymore. But probably the only thing that I would say is particularly weird or inexplicable is me and my partner were in the castle and we were preparing for a Valentine's Day tour. We were doing a candlelit tour of the castle for Valentine's Day and we were over in the keep just getting all the candles out because we'd kind of realised that you can't just walk around with a candle because there's just not enough light. You need a lot of candles in there. So we, we went around to kind of relight all of these candles anyway and make sure that they were all lit. And we got up into the gallery, which is the bit of the keep where people tend to report most, I don't know, eerie feelings or activity. One of the candles had moved from where we'd put it. We'd put them into the arrow loops, which are like the little triangular spaces before you get to the narrow slit windows. And one of them had moved from the arrow loop out into the middle of the corridor, just one candle. And it was still upright and it was still lit. So we kind of thought, could it have blown over and rolled? But then blown over, rolled, stood itself back up and still be lit. And then we went down the corridor, we turned the corner and there's another one that had done exactly the same thing. It shifted from the window into the middle of the corridor. Yeah, I think they're all lit. Let's just leave it. <laughs> Go back downstairs because I'm getting kind of creeped out now. It's a creepy place as you're going to find out yourselves <laughs> when you're locked in overnight. There are plenty of tragic events tied to Newcastle Castle and some that have left their mark in ways that aren't necessarily paranormal but are truly unbelievable. Um, a little girl was crushed in the street outside the castle by a guy throwing a donkey off the roof of the keep um, as part of some bizarre stunt in the 1700s. The flying donkey is a, is a classic bit of Newcastle folklore. I mean, it's not just folklore, that, that is recorded in a newspaper from the time when it happened in 1733. A guy, he was described as a flying man, so this is like a person who professionally jumps off high buildings. Uh, he flew down off the roof of the keep and then he came back up and he chucked a donkey down attached to this rope and uh, a little girl was standing watching and she was crushed by the donkey. She was killed. I mean like killed outright. So. Knowing the castle had seen so much throughout its long lifetime and so many had encountered the paranormal within its ancient stone walls, we were ready to investigate but what we would uncover here would truly shock us and leave us feeling as though we'd truly made a connection with the other side. Guys, we are kicking off tonight's episode on the roof of a castle. Oh my God, show them Jared, show them. Whoa, look at that view. That is insane. It's even got like soldiers on the roof. <laughs> hey, look at that. This is such a cool shot. 
Definitely the best view in Newcastle. Oh my god. <laughs> but of course we didn't come to Newcastle for the views. We came here for the ghosts. I can't wait to show you guys around either. This place is magnificent, but there are a lot of stairs. So we're starting at the top, working our way down so we're not all like out of breath for you guys. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of stairs here. You thought Oxford Castle was bad? There's so many more stairs at this place. At least it feels like it anyway. Watch your stair. Oh my God. Look at this spiral staircase as well. This pretty much connects the entire tower. This one staircase. Oh, what the fuck? What did I just see down here? You saw something? I literally just saw something. What was that? I thought I saw like a light or a mist down here. I know mists are supposedly common. Can I just it... say something too? What? Ghost tips just stop. It's just quit out of it. It's just crashed or? I don't know. What the heck? Okay, start it again. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start it again. But can I just say as well, I thought I saw something too. Where? Here? Like a, yeah, like while I was walking behind you, I thought I saw like a, a light or something along the wall down the end here. Right, I don't know if it was something reflecting. Yeah, yeah, like to me, I thought it could have been something reflecting, but it's not doing it now. Well, you walk around the corner and come back in because you have the light and I'll just film and see what I see. In this moment, Jared and I both saw something strange, which we had described as being some sort of light, though also like an illuminated mist. I have reviewed both of our camera angles and sadly, neither of them captured anything out of the ordinary. We did try to recreate what we had seen, in case it was a light reflection cast down the hallway, yet we were not able to do so. This paired with our ghost tube app quitting by itself was quite interesting. Like to me, it was like around here somewhere. Mine was sort of more on the staircase down here, down here, but I don't know what that was. Sinner. Sinner. Oh. Just got our first word, sinner. Are we Wait. sinners or is there someone here who has sinned? This there, pl place was used as a jail. There is a chapel here too. And there is, yeah. But we're not near it, it's a couple of floors down. That's interesting though, this is where we saw something and we get our first response right here. So whether it's relevant or not, maybe it's just ghost tube is showing that there is energy in the area. But I do think sinner definitely could be related to this place. A lot of battles, a lot of wars, uh, people were imprisoned here, people were executed here, hung, drawn and quartered, and then their body parts displayed on the castle keep. I'm not getting any magnetic, like visible magnetic spikes though, but that is weird. I heard a tap I just heard a here. noise down here, yeah. If there's someone back here, can you make another noise? Grace. Grace. Sinner, grace, like these are religious terms. Are you religious? Isn't there a ghost story about a monk here as well? People have encountered a, a black monk here who can be aggressive. Are you an aggressive monk? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to walk around this area. Oh, I can hear the church bells. I don't know why I like that so much. <laughs> well, paired with sinner and grace. grace. Higher. I just got the word higher. Higher, like higher, or higher someone. To higher, do a job. like higher. Yeah, I don't know. Oh. Just the word higher. Well, this is the galleries. This looks into the Great Hall, which is just down here. We're pretty fucking high. We're super high. This tower is huge, but where we are walking now, figures have been seen a lot. There's just shadows sort of passing by. There's a lower level of the gallery as well, and a lot of people see dark shadows there too. So the galleries that overlook the Great Hall, I think, is one of the spots. And a lot of people think that the Great Hall, as a result of that, the galleries kind of overlook you from there. So um, anything up there can kind of look down in on you. There's a small staircase leading up to a big pair of windows in the Great Hall as well. And I know somebody has taken a quite a well-known photograph of um, a figure, what they, they called an apparition, a very indistinct kind of clown like sort of figure um, on that staircase. So my name is Amy, I'm here tonight in the castle with Jared and we would love to talk to anyone that is here. So please don't be scared of us. Can you make yourself known by making this thing in my hand make a bunch of noises? 
tagging your train and I am going to note guys this is one of the best preserved castle keeps in Britain but also it's the only castle keep that is still standing this intact in the middle of a major city so we're being very wary of traffic noise there's a railway line right next to the keep so I'm just making note of that for you guys and for my own records what do you think of all the train noises does it drive you mad I just heard more noises in the stairwell you just heard more noises here there's tapping noises down there If you can hear our voice, can you walk towards us, either up or down the stairs? Make a loud noise for us. <gasps> Sounds like it was coming from downstairs, actually. But like coming up the stairs yeah. towards us. <gasps> Should we follow it? Yeah, let me get I this. Think I'm <gasps> oh, what does it say? Bribed. 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 Oh, that's interesting. We trying to bribe someone? We in here for bribing someone? <laughs> Whoa, that was really deep. <laughs> Like we come down to find it and then it moves upstairs, that's weird. You can follow us, just come up to us. Please don't be scared of us. So we are in another area of the gallery. You can see the Great Hall through here. Amazing, amazing place. This walkway here is probably the most common place for people to see visual ph phenomena. Shadow play, shadow people passing through here. And one of the theories, and people speculate, but they actually don't know the deal with this, is this staircase up here. It's literally a staircase to nowhere. How can you have a staircase to nowhere? Go find out. <laughs> oh yeah, it quite literally is a stairwell to nowhere. So as far as the paranormal goes, the shadows are seen here. People speculate it has ties to this unfinished staircase. Why is that unfinished? Why is it even there? Does it have a purpose? It's often speculated that they started the staircase, war broke out as it so often did here between the English and the Scottish. And then after the war, they were like, Pff, can't be bothered finishing the stairs. And I don't blame them because I reckon this place has enough stairs as is. You're not kidding. I am hearing noises down here though. I just said that thud. That sounded like wood. Can you make another loud noise for me? Oh, oh, oh. I'm getting a magnetic spike just here. Check the stair rail. Oh yeah, is that? Debunked. The Great Hall, honestly guys, this is so amazing. This place, oh, it's huge and it's just beautiful. And obviously that's where we were just up here. Also the unfinished staircase is like just on that bit there. So that's where people are often seen walking across. There's actually a really cool place of interest coming off of this room. There's a cell up here. We're not in the dungeon yet, but there is a cell and this cell had a toilet. So that means it was for someone very important. Just in here. So this cell here. Let's go have a look. Why do we always end up in the bathroom here on Amy's Creek? I swear to <sighs> God. Every time. Here it is. The dunny. And you know what? You know how Jared said this was for special prisoners, like people of royalty or people they had to look after had the toilet. The dungeon downstairs didn't have a toilet. It literally was a toilet. So you'd just be in the shit, basically. Uh, hang on. I just felt a breeze here. I'm feeling one right now too. But where's that coming from? Probably is... the toilet hole. The toilet hole's got a plastic covering. Yeah, but it could be under this place. <laughs> now royalty 
did stay here from time to time. They believe that this was the king's quarters. And I did find some graffiti on the wall here that dates back to the 1600s during the civil war here. Is there a king here? If there's a king here, I wanna see you. Can you come out and make this thing light up? Can you do something for us? I'm gonna sit in your throne. I did it. I'm sitting in your throne. The only other room in this area before we go down to the prison is the well room. What's in the well room? Well, since you asked so politely, a well is in the well room. <laughs> oh yeah, light me up. It's a pretty deep freaking well. Like that little white dot at the bottom, that's the reflection of my light. I don't know if that means anything to you guys, but I'm telling you, it's a long bloody well. Despite the well room having no prevalent ghost stories, it was a site of historical interest I wanted to share, especially since the castle sits on top of a water source which could potentially add to the paranormal activity within the building. Yet, during our short stay within the room, we captured what appears to be two voices onto our camera's audio that were not Jared's or my own. This isn't something we heard or tagged in the moment, so I'm not sure it was an external noise from the keep, yet I thought I'd share it with you all to see if you can make sense of what may have been said. Bottom. That's the reflection of my light. I don't know if that means anything. Bottom. That's the reflection of my light. I don't know if that means anything. Dungeons or chapel? Dungeons or chapel? Yeah, what do you guys reckon? Dungeons or chapel? Yeah, let's do the chapel first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jared, I did find this today. This hole in the wall, you can see the dungeon through it. I'm just like, nothing's gonna like jump out and poke me in the eye or something. No! Like, you, you could actually see through to the prison. Oh yeah, you can. Anyway, we have to show you the chapel. Whoa. Honestly guys, the chapel is gorgeous and they do say this is the most intact and accurate part of the castle keep to how it would have looked originally. So, it's just gorgeous. I love it in here. Yeah, that roof is crazy. There is a little tombstone over here, a Norman gravestone, circa 1080 to 1095. And this place is built on top of a very old cemetery. So many reasons to be haunted. Okay, dungeon time. This is the most haunted place, guys. This is a royal castle, so it actually did have a proper jail. A lot of castles, the dungeons that they kind of show tourists are not dungeons at all, they're like storage cellars and things like that. But this is a royal castle, I mean this was used as a prison for hundreds and hundreds of years as the county jail for Northumberland, so the, the dungeon downstairs is like the real deal. It's still got the metal rings in the wall where prisoners were chained, um, it has graffiti on the doors and stuff, which uh, some of which is almost certainly um, scratched there by prisoners and locked in there, and lots of whom will have been sentenced to death after being dragged out of that room to the court briefly, so um, that place obviously has quite a long kind of grim history to it. What the heck was that? I didn't see or hear anything. I just heard a loud tap like on this door or something and this door is original. Yeah, that is an old bloody door. This door is original. You, you can, can actually, see. See, yeah, there's markings from prisoners leave. on here. Leave. <sighs> We're about to enter the dungeon and it says leave. Why do you want us to leave? We don't mean you any harm. Can we not come in? How come? Sorry, I'm gonna come in. I hope that's okay. I have been told, be careful of this room. It's, you know, the most haunted. I've been told people have been taken over, I'll say, by entities. So if you are going to be, let's say, possessed, it's in this room and allegedly that has happened to a number of people. There is, of course, the story of Poppy, the most famous ghost here. It's probably the most famous 
named or almost named um, ghost is uh, the poppy girl whose name is sometimes given as poppy um, in fact so depending on who you who you're getting the story from but she's supposed to have been a flower seller who was i think sometime in the 1800s was locked in the prison in the basement of the castle keeps so that was the county jail for northumberland for a long time um, and she was imprisoned and died um, down in the prison and the sort of grisly details of how she died are up to the the individual teller as well as the crime that she committed to get thrown in the prison. Um, there's not much actual documentary evidence for her, I think, um, I would say. there's like I haven't been able to find any reference to her going back any farther than 1992. That's the oldest mention of that story and the oldest mention of a specific ghost story. So Poppy, I don't know that that's your name. Maybe a lot of people call you that, but if there is a little girl here, my name is Amy. I'm here tonight with Jared and we would love to talk to you. We don't mean you any harm. We won't hurt you. So I want to let you know that it's okay if you wanted to talk to us. How old are you, little Poppy? Little Poppy? How old are you? Can I just say that for a dungeon, this is a very weird layout. It seems like a grand hall to me, you know what I mean? Would, would there have been cells here? Like, how would it have worked? No cells here. People were just chucked down here. Men, women, children, all together. They were shackled. Originally, there was no roof here. During the 15, 1600s. Oh, thank you. If, if this is the little girl or somebody else, we're here just to talk to you. Just telling everybody about what it was like Heard when something. you would have been here. I Heard think it was that window up there. That's so nice of them to talk to me. We're here to yeah, talk to you. We are here to talk to you. But as I was saying, at this point, the castle was in ruins. There was no roof. Any weather, rain, snow, anything would come down and it would fill up this area, it would flood. But as I mentioned earlier, there was no toilets down here. So it would be flood water and human waste. It would have been rank and disgusting and just terrible down here. Adding to that, people were shackled to the wall. And over here we can see evidence of that. Rich. Yeah, the rich people were the ones with the toilets. I'm sorry that you didn't have that privilege down here. So here, this is an original sort of fixture for the shackles. And then in here is an example of the shackles. It would have been absolutely horrible. And that is where the little girl's story originates. People, some people call her Poppy. Some people say she was just selling poppies, like selling flowers, that was her job. But uh, she's said to have been murdered down here. If you were thrown down here in a room full of people who were hungry, starving, desperate, like bad people. Anything could have happened to you down here, especially as a child. So I don't know that the story is necessarily substantiated by historical fact, but I can picture things happening down here that would be similar to the story of the poppy girl. And talking about desperation as well, apparently outside the castle, just outside this area here, the stone is worn. And it's worn because people on the outside were desperately trying to get food, water supplies to their loved ones who were being held here in the prison down here. A lot of people were also executed here. So people were awaiting their fate here, awaiting their time to die. Do you know if these are like original? I Opens. doubt they're original because they look so nice, but yeah. you, you could definitely be sentenced to have to spend time in one of those. Did it say rich again? Rich twice. I just heard the window. It sounds like someone tapping on the window. It could be wind. Let me try. These, they honestly, this window doesn't feel loose. So guys, up there I'm hearing like rattling on a pane of glass. I literally with my hand just tested every single pane in that window and I can't replicate that noise. It's weird. So we got the word rich twice. I'm not sure if rich is a name or if they're saying like you're rich or something, you know? I don't know, you were talking about the privileges of the wealthy before, but. It was weird timing for rich to come out because I had just mentioned the toilet and the rich people having an actual toilet in their dungeon or their cell. There is some graffiti down here too. You can see some of this is actually, they believe is original too. It's crazy. Can you tell us what the graffiti says?
So this chamber up here is just like another extension of the dungeon. So it probably was used to hold prisoners back in the day. Jesus. <laughs> and we found another toilet. Another one? God, how many <laughs> does this place have? Oh my God. Anyway, the fact that we're seeing a toilet here means that we're in somebody's quarters who was important. They believe this was for the queen. It's sort of set up as an office right now. They do believe it was the queen's quarters, but at some stage, they believe that this area could have had links to monks. And one of the paranormal things to happen very often here is that people will hear monks chanting in this room. Probably not paranormal, it might just be the stuff they've got in here. But I reckon it smells like um, fruitcake, like, you know that Christmas fruitcake that they sell I can smell it time? too, yeah. Like a fruitcake smell. There is a sweetness to this room that the rest of the castle doesn't have. Cinnamony? Yeah. Cinnamon? Like, I don't know if they've got like herbs or something on here or something, I don't know, but it smells, I can't see any, but it smells like cinnamony or something in here. Having now covered all areas inside the castle keep of significance, we return to the Great Hall, a central place of historical importance, to begin reaching out. In addition to this, we set up a Ghost 2 Best Celeste camera to monitor the area of the gallery where Jared and I earlier thought we had seen something illuminated and mist-like, as well as another to monitor the staircase to nowhere, where many people claim to sight shadow figures. But within the Great Hall, we set up to run Ghost 2 Vox and see if any intelligent responses and voices could be documented. Hi, I'm Amy. This is Jared. Can we have your name, please? I thought I heard something. Qu what did you say? I thought I heard creaking over here as it said that. I thought it said where they leave or where they lie, maybe. Maybe more where they leave. Who is leaving? Please stay. Who are we talking with? If you won't share your name, maybe you can share your status. A king, a queen, a prisoner, a lord, a lady. Let us smith. Did you hear something about smith? Like they would call a blacksmith a smith, right? Maybe, yeah, I did hear that. So you're a, a trades person? Why did you come to this castle? It's really... Can you tell me, are you English or are you Scottish? And they were not. Where are you from? <laughs> Why are you still here in the keep? I've heard there's a little girl here who was a flower seller and you smell of flowers. I would love to smell that tonight. Is this a true story? Are you really here? I heard suffered. A woman saying suffered, which could be relevant to so much here at the castle but also uh, the poppy girl story. How did you suffer? Just cut it out for a sec, I just heard that came from in here. That's like clicking. I feel like it was that door. This is sort of like the door into the keep as well, like officially. But yeah, I heard like clicking down here. Is there someone making noises down here? Can you make that noise again? Mother? Are you looking for your mother? Are you a mother? That mother had a pretty deep voice. It was a dude's voice, but that's why I was like, are you looking for your mother? Here, we got some pretty amazing communication, which began by us hearing a sort of clicking noise that seemed to emanate from the main door into the castle keep. After this, we received a response through Ghost Tube Vox, which said mother, clearly with a male voice and an English accent. Mother. Mother. 
What really astonished me, however, is following this response for Vox, we picked up on another voice, this time female, that also says mother. This voice, however, was not something that came through Ghost to Vox and was something that our camera audio picked up within the castle. It's also not something we heard in the moment, leading me to believe it was an EVP. Are you a mother? Are you a mother? I can't say for sure what mother meant, but the fact that we received the word in two different ways makes me feel it must be significant, and further helps validate the equipment and communication styles we use to investigate. Can you tell us who's roaming the castle on the upper floors? That would be Carol. That would be Carol? That's what I heard, but... I didn't hear the last bit. Who's roaming the upper levels of the castle? Can you tell me that? Church was a creepy in a dark castle on your own. They are. Can you hear the bells too? Yeah, the town's so What are the church bell what do the church bells mean? Did you hear that? Just heard something in that corner, yeah. I thought it was up. There maybe. Can you tell us what's making that noise? Am I allowed in the king's chamber? Is it alright if I go in here? As we enter the former king's quarters, we receive a response that I did not see as relevant in the moment referring to a woman's work. Perhaps this was a room where women were not permitted. Additionally, after this, I would be told that I wasn't welcome in this space and then told to get out three times. Do you think this could be meaningful? Can you tell me about this room? Can you tell us whose room this used to be? Used to be. Used to be? <laughs> Yeah, can you tell us whose cell this used to be? Just repeated what I said then. That's weird. Whose room was this? Can you tell me where I'm standing? I do what was. What was it? Am I supposed to be in here? Do you want to take over? Did it say not her? Yeah, actually, now that I think about it, it did sound like that. Maybe they don't want you here. Here, you take this and I'll swap. Here, I'll stand just outside the door then. I know. Alright, is it okay if he's in there? Just for the record, guys, they believe this was the king's quarters that we're standing in right now. Probably why they don't want me in there. Peasant woman. <laughs> what do you think of me? Out. out. Okay. It was almost like, pss, like, here's a warning, here's a tip. Get out. Should we be, not be in there because we're not royal? We're just lowly peasants? I don't think they wanted us in that room, Jared. <laughs> yeah. Okay, is there anyone in the hall that can talk to us? Anyone at all? With responses in the Great Hall slowing right down, Jared and I made our way downstairs to the chapel. As we felt like we had received some religious words early in the night, we decided to run Ghost Tube SLS while we descended and made use of the LiDAR filter that maps the depth of the environment while looking to detect human-shaped figures. In addition to this, we left a still camera rolling inside the Queen's room, since the ghostly chanting of monks had been heard there in the past. So if there are any monks or anyone else around, we would love to hear your prayers, your chants, your singing. Switch your step. If there's anyone here, can you make yourself appear in front of me? Oh, ow. It's okay, I just I just walked into this. <laughs> oh my god, that looks so creepy on this. It just looks like you're walking into a void. Yeah. So 
So guys, we are technically walking through the jail or the dungeon area right now. If anyone can hear my voice, we would love to interact with you tonight. I haven't got any figures yet. Oh my God, that is just one big dark void in here. So those of you that are using- Ooh! What? Spider. Oh. His shadow is there, he's just here. Ah. Oh. I literally could only see its shadow. You can barely just see him on camera. I'm not seeing any figures. Um, doesn't necessarily mean that it's not haunted or that there aren't spirits here. I was really hoping we'd get something down here. If there is somebody here and you can hear my voice, please don't be afraid of us. We would love to see you, we would love to say hello. Can you pray for us? Hello? Ooh. Oh. Oh, 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 right Guys, next experiment down in the dungeon, I have the craziest idea for an Estes method. Oh no, what? <laughs> Look what I got. I got, no. some, I got some cuffs to replace those handcuffs no. that you broke at Brushy Mountain State No, I'm traumatized from that. No, I'm not doing it. Okay, well, I do have a backup idea if Fine. you weren't going Anything to put these for on. Them. Fine. All right, let's do the backup idea. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so how are you feeling about this plan B? Obviously <laughs> Come so, on, get me up. Well, are the handcuffs starting to feel a bit more suitable? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Just get me out. <laughs> How are we feeling in those cuffs, Jared? Well, better than that headlock thing. But I am seriously traumatised after the incident at Brushy State. Why? There may be a backfire. No! Like I cannot see it, but I just didn't... <laughs> All jokes aside, we now set up to perform an ST session in the dungeon. This saw Jared wear a blindfold and noise cancelling headphones while listening to a spirit box and relaying anything he heard come through, while I asked questions that he could not hear. Additionally, we handcuffed Jared to one of the original shackle loops on the wall of the dungeon, as a sort of trigger for the spirits, and our results would be truly chilling. So my name is Amy, this guy over here, his name is Jared, and I would love for you to go up to Ooh and talk to him. Say anything that you would like to him. <laughs> Am I funny? Maybe you can um, go towards that red light. I've put some keys there that'll help you get out. Or maybe you can walk up this staircase here. Couple of balls on the staircase. Please. Can we have your name, please? Again, my name's Amy, the guy with the funny things on his ears. Five. And there is. is Jared. Is there five of you in here? What was your crime? I won't judge you. My name's you. Clinton. We didn't know this at the time, but the name Clinton does have its origins in England, where it was used to indicate one's ancestry was from the areas of Glimpton or Glinton, and the fourth Duke of Newcastle during the 1800s was even named Henry Clinton. Though I cannot say Clinton is relevant, this background does make the name seem more fitting. Thank you so much for sharing that with me, Clinton. We're here. That's so cool. I mean, maybe not that you're in this actual spot, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? That's that window again. I'm food. You. Would you like some food? That's funny because that's the window they Pig. Used, used to get the food from. Pig, is that something you were called? Or are you talking to me? Or you want to eat pig? I can bring you some food if you would like. Collapsed. Here. Are you sick down here? Hasn't broken. Hasn't broken your spirits? I'm sure you're very strong. Were you down here the a long? The beast. Were you down here for very long? Do you know how long? Relationship. Who are you referring to? So this is what I'm looking at, guys. I felt the floorboards moving over here. Well, that's weird, because I'm very far from there. Are you near Jared? 
If you are, can you go towards the My right, right leg. Can you touch him? He won't mind. What's for dinner? Whatever you would like. I can go get you some food if you want. I'm a bit blind. I am too. See these? They help me see a little bit. Or maybe you think of Jared because he's got that covering on his eyes. What can you see in this room? Can you tell me anything that you can see here? Just heard a noise in here. Labour. The church says. Church wanted you to do work for them. <gasps> Negative. Guys. Are you coming in from that staircase? I just thought I saw something. I'll tell you about it afterwards. In this moment, Jared sees a vision in his mind, almost like a psychic vision, which is something that can be brought on from inducing trance-like states, such as in the Estes method, which he will explain later. Scarily, what he sees does end up being relevant to this location and the religious words we had just received. I also find it interesting that this would occur right as I heard a slight noise come from the staircase, where a cat ball also triggered, since pairing moments of interest together always feels more compelling than them happening independent to one another. Is there a little girl here? A high-pitched, really high-pitched ringing noise. I would love to talk to the little girl and I put these balls on the staircase just for you. Maybe you like to play with them. Accepted. Accepted. Okay, so you want to play, you will play with them? Sort of like a game. Also, I thought I heard a few indistinct child voices, but I couldn't make out what they were saying. So I was just asking for the little girl. Now the reason I'm down on my knees, I just thought that I would kneel, is I did a special video for my de Demons level patrons and YouTube members early today when we first got here and the- It's unclear. The first word I got through down in the dungeon was kneel, so I thought I would kneel. How can I be more clear for you? My voice or is that how you can talk to Jared? Is it hard to talk to us? More. I don't know what happened here for you, for you, but I'm sure it was probably not very pleasant and I, I just want to say I'm sorry for that. We're here. Can you tell me whereabouts? Feel free to use it. Leave. Someone new here? You don't want us down here in the dungeon, do you? Leave. Why should we leave? I, I hope we're not upsetting you, or are you saying leave to look out for us? There. I get the feeling when we're getting leave, because we had leave earlier. It leave. Was more like a protective thing, not like leave, you're annoying me, and I don't like you, but more like leave. Executed. I just said the word executed, believe it or not. And that sort of fits in with what I'm feeling like, leave, this isn't a good place for you. Not necessarily leave because we don't like you and then execute it. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but is that something that might have happened to you? Or someone you know, someone in this room? The next body. I know that a lot of people were executed here. I know that people were- Under. People were hung, drawn and quartered here even. Under. Me. Under, under Jared? Her. Are you talking about me or is there another her here? A little girl maybe? Maybe a lady? Keep hearing that window banging, it's kind of freaky. I'm also hearing Jared's handcuff move, but I don't know if that's him moving his hand or it's just moving. To me, the movement noises here sound exactly like the fake handcuffs I had placed Jared in moving around. Additionally, that was the direction from where the sounds were coming from in the room. In the moment, I was unsure if Jared was actually moving around causing the noise, but from watching the replay from the camera, he is completely still. Yet what would happen next was extremely creepy. <laughs> Are you English or Scottish? Are you okay? Something just happened with my wrist and these handcuffs. 
What? Well, either gravity or something can, like, they slipped or they just moved. I don't know. You have to see what it's like. What's like. so weird is a few times before you said that and, like, looked at them, I could hear the handcuffs moving. I was like, I don't know if Jared is moving, but I could hear the handcuff, like, that distinct rattle noise that they make. Shake your wrist a bit. That exact noise I heard a couple of times then, but I kind of wasn't looking at you, so I just assumed you might have been moving. So I don't know if something was tugging at your handcuffs. I also just want to say when you kept saying leave them, I didn't feel um, threatened by the leave or leave as in like, you guys are annoying us, leave. But I almost felt like leave was a protective thing, like leave, you shouldn't be here, this is not a good place. Like. Well, it's really weird because the leaves I just heard then were like, leave, leave. They weren't like, leave. You See, I, I mean? don't get the, a threatening thing, like it's someone that's angry at us being here and they don't want us in here. Oh, no, I'm, not really, really, I'm really, really cold all of a sudden, sorry. I'm really cold. Can you go towards the red light next to him? Without further interactions here, I asked Jared to explain the image he had seen in his mind while performing the Estes. So on the internet, we might be able to find a few to show you guys, but on the internet there's these images circulating where you look at the image, it's a black and white image, and you stare at it for 10 seconds. And then when you close your eyes, you're supposed to see a different image like burned into your, your eye, you know what I mean? Or if you stare at a bright light for a long time, you see it when you shut your eyes. Like I can still see that light now, like burning into my eyes. It was sort of like that, but I saw, best I can describe it was like a man with a weird hat. And I immediately thought priest. Like it was like a weird diamond hat with something on it, maybe like a cross or something, some symbol on it, and a man. It was really weird. I don't think I've had that before. And I don't claim to be psychic or anything. I'm just saying like it just burned into my eyes like randomly, like from nowhere. All right guys, so we've come to the chapel trying to see if we can piece together any clues about what I thought I saw. Unfortunately, none of the pictures or diagrams on the wall have anything that resembles what I described. But I did find a picture online that looks like what I saw. So I'm gonna bring it up now. So Jared is a massive Futurama fan, and this is his bloody reference picture that he gives me. <laughs> this is what I saw. Not the lizard bit, but that's the hat. That's what I saw, like a weird diamond shaped hat. So funnily enough, we go upstairs to our guides who work here. They're quite knowledgeable about the castle and the place. And we ask, what would have the priests or the religious folk here worn? And they don't know exactly, but they said because this church was sort of a private church and it was just for the royals, they would have been adorned in very, very fancy clothing. And the I'm lizard's like, clothing oh, is fancy. Okay, so maybe that was something that he's, I don't know. Well, like that is just, and we have had religious words come through tonight, so. Yeah. I'm not gonna say that I'm psychic or guys. This was just a weird random image that was burned into the back of my eyeballs when I closed my eyes. But that's what I thought I saw. Not the lizard bit, but the hat. So I don't know, I, I don't know, make it what you will, but that's what I thought I saw. Is it relevant? Leave a comment. Is this the third eye kind of thing? Leave a comment. Or have I just been watching too much Futurama? Doing a little further research on this description, I feel like what Jared saw could have been a medieval bishop, yet I'm no expert on religion. Either way, the dungeon proved to be a very interesting place during our investigation, but as the night was wearing on, we wanted to spend some time reaching out, conducting an EVP session in the former Queen's quarters where the ghostly chanting of monks had been reported in the past. So is there anyone with us here in this room? If so, can you make yourselves known by talking to this device in my hand? Just to introduce ourselves, my name is Amy and this here is Jared. Could we please have your name? Can you tell us about the chanting that people hear in this area of the castle? Tagging the clock. Or the church bells, sorry. Do you enjoy hearing that sound? Can you tell us what your role was here in the castle? 
We reviewed the EVP recording but unfortunately did not pick up anything of interest. Yet our time at Newcastle Castle had been a fruitful and unforgettable one. From the strange mist we had seen earlier in the night, to the words from Ghost Tube leading us through the castle, to the same response coming through Vox and a potential EVP, the spirits telling me to get out of the King's Room, and finally, the amazing interactions along with warnings and even images we received in the castle dungeon. This was such an incredible night, inside a truly incredible castle. Welcome to a sprawling, pristine estate filled with spectacular gardens and housing one of the most haunted buildings in Wales, Margam Castle. Though this building is not officially a castle, simply being built to resemble one by Christopher Talbot in the early 1800s, the grounds of the estate have been inhabited for the past 4,000 years, and the ruins of an abbey dating to the 1100s still exist a short distance from the castle, making it a truly historic place. Today, much of Markham Castle sadly remains ruined due to abandonment and later a fire, though many of its past inhabitants remain intact. The most famous spirit to linger at Markham Castle is that of Robert Scott, a former gamekeeper who lived on the estate before being murdered, shot on the grounds by a poacher. He is claimed by many to hang around the grounds and in particular the main staircase of Margam Castle, still angered by his murder. Robert Scott is also a known poltergeist who isn't shy about throwing rocks at visitors. Other spirits said to haunt the castle are those of young children, thought to date back to Victorian times for their old fashioned clothing. They are typically seen and heard playing around the upper back floors of the building, where a former nursery was present. Many to visit have claimed to hear their running footsteps travel along the wooden floors, and the playful giggles of children not to be seen. We were lucky enough to talk to my good friend, Alison from Haunted Horizons, whose work I have linked below, about a past paranormal investigation she conducted at the castle, where some seriously scary activity occurred near the nursery. Margam Castle actually was one of the few places that really we felt quite scared at, and we go into these places all the time. We were investigating up in the very back room, so it's upstairs, furthest end away from the whole of the building. And it's near what they call the nursery. And we were sitting in there, we turned the lights out. We were sitting in this room around a table when we could hear swishing. If, if you had a long dress on and you were moving around with a long dress on, you would hear the material just swishing around. That's what it, that's what it sounded like. And footsteps, and it was circling us on the outside of the room there. We also had heavy male breathing in the room with us. And it was just the tenseness, just the whole atmosphere of it. And while this was happening, suddenly there was a big kind of clack behind us. It sounded like a stone falling or being thrown. There was nobody else in this building. The only person on site was a security guard and he was sitting outside in his car. So we did actually find the stone and yeah, we don't know where it came from, but we did hear it being thrown. Then a bit later in the night, the security guard did come back in. He did join us and we were sitting at the bottom of those big stairs. The noises were just in booms upstairs and they were all coming from that area where we just were. So ran about the nursery area. It was just a very unnerving place at night. Adding to the paranormal claims of Margam Castle and its wider grounds are the sightings of black shadow figures, disembodied footsteps and even voices. We couldn't wait to tackle Markham Castle and its surrounding ruins for a paranormal investigation we wouldn't soon forget. Crypt Keepers, we are here at Margam Castle. I am so excited for this one. Jared and I actually visited a few years ago, say 2018 I think it was, and we did a day tour but we didn't have the resources or ability to rent this place out at night to investigate and have the whole castle to ourselves like we do now for you guys. So thank you again. Like this, this has just been the most epic of trips and I'm so happy to be able to share this place, this experience with you guys as well. So. Tonight, really looking forward to investigating this place. It's like bringing back all, all the old feels coming here. So cool. How do you feel, Jared? Yeah, I feel really good to be here. Like this place is one of the most visually appealing places we have ever filmed at. Like the staircase you guys are about to see, it's just, just for that alone, ghost stories aside, that's even just worth visiting this place. I am in love with it. I want to live here. This place is so pretty. <laughs> You'd get too cold here, I reckon. Yeah, probably. <laughs> oh my god. There it is, the staircase. This is so epic. Oh, I get um, Labyrinth vibes. Yeah. You know with what's that guy's name that sings the song in Labyrinth? 
David Bowie. David Bowie vibes on this staircase because it just goes on and on and on. Better roll and go, Stu, before we forget. And I definitely want it rolling for when we walk into this area, the staircase. Yeah, it's definitely beautiful. Wow, look at that. That is Game of Thrones vibes, right? Am I in Game of Thrones right now? Or is this my life? <laughs> Pinch me. <laughs> Actually, don't. <laughs> My favourite part about the staircase though is the staircase is haunted. So many years ago when this place was in operation, say 1800s, there was a gamekeeper named Robert Scott. He lived on the castle grounds and lived and worked here. He was actually murdered. He was shot dead by a poacher. And supposedly it is his spirit that hangs around here because he's disgruntled at the way that he died. Obviously he was murdered. I would have a lot of pent up rage about that as well. And he throws things at people, moves things. So he's a poltergeist. And one of the things that he's said to do, I mean, one of them is that he's sighted around here as a sort of shadow figure near the stairs, but he also throws rocks at people, which is very interesting because something happened to Jared just like that hours earlier. It's still um, daylight, guys. We're just waiting for sun to go down before we get into our other experiments, but this is where it happened. So I was standing right here. I think I was just looking at this window because there was some other people on the grounds. I was just watching a still camera we left out there. And all of a sudden I heard a rock land on something hard. Like, you know when a rock hits a floor and like rolls or tumbles? I heard that in this back corner here. I wasn't rolling on any cameras. I quickly got my phone out and started recording. It didn't happen again though. That video is for our Patreon YouTube members. It didn't capture anything, but you know, that's, at least you see my reaction. But then straight after that as well, there was a loud bang noise that happened down this end of the room. And this is a pretty big room. So for me to say that it was a loud bang, it was pretty loud. <laughs> And we never actually found out what that was. Just started filming because I heard something like a rock or something being thrown. I heard a rock or something being thrown in this corner of the room. I'm in the downstairs living space. And then I heard a loud knock down this end. So I don't know if there's somebody down here, but if you can hear my voice, my name is Amy, this is Jared, and we're here to communicate tonight. Please don't be shy. I mean, maybe you've already done things to let us know that you're around. Maybe you can come close to the lights in my hands and you can tell us who you are though. You triggered some words on our device earlier on tonight. Can you do that again? I just heard a screaming. Yeah. I thought I could hear talking or something. I just heard a scream. It sounded like a kid as well, I'm gonna be honest. I don't see anyone outside though. There's some massive grounds. I mean, unless someone snuck into the grounds and is like running around, but I mean, it's probably what, like 10 p.m. So to hear a kid right now is weird. And I heard that. Well, I feel like that was up. I'm gonna... Up on the next floor? Yep. That's what I'm thinking. Directly above us is like another living area like this, although decked out in original or timely furniture. And because of fire and deterioration of this place, um, up there, the ceiling, that's just a, a wooden floor that is very loud. So if someone is walking up there, it's super loud from down here. And, and. There is no one else in this building. We have this place to ourselves. There is no one else here. That's so cool. Okay, we're starting to get things. Can I just say though, the noise I heard earlier was a lot louder than that. Mine was like a loud bang over here and the rock being thrown or the rock landing on something hard, that was an uncanny, an, an uncanny sound, like it was very clear. This isn't even said to be one of the, like the really haunted areas, but things happen. Backward. Backward. Do they want us to go back? Which way do you want us to go? Can you tell us where you are? Let's just stand here for a moment. This is where we heard that sound. Can you do it again? We waited for some time in this position, yet nothing else occurred. Having heard some noises already was very interesting considering we were completely alone within the castle. We did have a security guard present, although he was stationed on the grounds inside his van, well away from the building. And to me, hearing children here was particularly curious, as our security guard had earlier told us about an experience involving children that had happened to him in the next room over. So he was in this room. 
and he was standing just there by the window. He was just security for a paranormal group. So a, paran a group of people came in, they sort of all congregated in this room before all heading upstairs together. So he was left standing here by this window by himself. And he reckons just over here behind me, he could hear little kids running about. You know, footsteps shuffling along, but past that fireplace, and there was no kids there. So that's kind of cool. This would have been the dining room, by the way. There's a sign on the other side of the door. Are there any children down here tonight? Can you hear my voice? We're here to play. There is like literally no way that that could have been someone outside of the castle before that voice. You know what, but as we're getting noises that sound like it's upstairs, should we just head up there? Yeah, let's go. We're heading upstairs now. If you want to follow us, you can. Robert, if you can hear us, we're coming upstairs. Is that all right? No, I'm just going to say it. You can throw a rock at me. I don't care. <laughs> just make sure it hits me if you're going to throw one. Maybe not in the eye. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Fireplace. <gasps> There's a fireplace up here. Keep going. Thank you for letting us know where you want us to go. Fireplace, there's so many actually. Okay, I found a fireplace. Is this where you wanted us to come? Can you give us a sign just to let us know, maybe just tap on the, the walls or the floor? Did you hear that? Yeah. I'm hearing children's voices. I am too. There's literally no, no one out there. I actually think this is all fenced off as well, right? I'm pretty sure, yeah. So this, honestly, this probably was where we heard the noise come from though. Up here, yeah? <gasps> Do you hear that? Yeah, there's movement over here. <gasps> <gasps> Thank you. Are you able to give us a louder noise? That sounded like someone putting shifting weight yeah. on a floorboard. Can you come towards us? My name's Amy and this is Jared. You don't need to be afraid of us. Oh, you're thirsty. Actually, I'm a bit parched. Same. <laughs> it's quite warm up here. Can you make us a drink? That'd be nice. Um, what would you like to drink? Can you let me know? Maybe I can get you a drink. Children are probably the main ghost story up here. And last time I was here, I was talking to a tour guide and they said that they were doing just a walk through history tour during the day one time. There was one family there who had one kid. The kid went missing during the tour. So obviously they're freaking out. The parents freaked out when they realized the kid was missing because they're lost in this castle. They later found the kid and was like, oh, oh, where have you been? Where have you, you been? And the kid was like, oh, I've been playing with the other little kids here. There was no other little kids on the tour. There was no other little kids in the castle. <laughs> the kid- <gasps> That. Oh my God. Why do you have got to say that like that? <gasps> oh, my heart. <laughs> um, no, don't go. Oh, I'm so sorry. We didn't mean to scare you. I know, that was super rude, huh? Please don't go. Again, my name's Amy, this is Jared. We got scared because of the bat. I don't know why I screamed like that. <laughs> But this little kid was found and he was playing with the other little kids who were the ghost children. Were those children found in the nursery? Or did they come down and they said they were in the nursery? Because there's a nursery that we're about to head into, right? Leave me alone. Oh. I'm so sorry. For, that is weird. Through there, directly in front of me, is where the nursery is. That is really, really weird. It's, it seemed like we screamed, which was kind of rude. Then it's like, I need to go, leave me alone. 
and it was like full wood. Okay, I'm gonna guess we need to go forward to the nursery. Now the nursery is the most active place. Obviously children haunt here. Maybe they are drawn to the, nor the nursery more so than the rest of the castle, but they've seen throughout the whole castle. Out of all of the areas here, they do say the most paranormally active is where we're headed, is forward. Do you want us to go forward? Is that, do you want us to come into the nursery? Is that where you want us to go? Guys, this room looks really like nicely decorated. It's because it was used in a, uh, as a set in a movie. The movie was called, what was the movie? I think the movie was called Angels and Demons or Demons and Angels. It's that, the second part to the Da Vinci Code movie. Do you remember that movie coming out? I think I only seen the Da Vinci Code. So. <gasps> yeah, there's that. Uh oh. My experience of bats, they feed at this time of night. I'm just gonna go to the nursery because if the bats are hanging around in here, we'll get out of their hair. But yeah, this was a film set. So I think that's very cool. I wonder, I feel like I got told they had paranormal activity while they were filming, but I can't remember what that was. If anyone's seen the movie and this set looks familiar, leave us a comment. Like the crib. Anyone in here? Can you give us a sign? I definitely feel like these back rooms, I mean, they just look creepy. Like holes in the wall, you know what I mean? So I'm very lucky as well, guys. Some of my best friends in the world who, you guys will know them, I talk about them all the time. Alison and Cag from Adelaide's Haunted Horizons. They came here a couple of years ago and I actually got to interview Alison on an experience that they had here. And I trust those ladies so much. I learn so much about the paranormal from them every time I hang out with them. They investigate a lot, a lot of places around the world, including this one, right? But this was one of the places that dead set scared them. And it was this back room that we're heading towards. They could hear like movement here and just, it really, really freaked them out because it was so intense and so loud. And by the way, this was the room, I'm pretty sure where that child from that ghost story earlier was said that they were playing with the kids, right? Smoke. What? Sorry, I just sent a bat fly behind you. Oh my God, don't tell me that. Okay, I won't. I'm leaving this hoodie on. <laughs> smoke? Smoke from the fireplace? Do you want to smoke? In this moment, I did not think of this connection and thought smoke could have been linked to the response of fireplace, which we had earlier received. Yet, in reflection, it could have also been relevant to a fire that tore through the building, leaving it in its now ruined state during the 1970s. You know what? For a nursery, it feels like we're going... Like, it's getting less and less inviting the further down we go. I'm oh, I just sent a bat in there. I'm saying heaps. Is there anyone in the nursery? Right, guys, there is a ton of bats in this back room. The bloody haunted nursery. <laughs> we don't want to disturb the bats. And I'm pretty sure this is like their peak feeding time as like the sun is almost gone. So... I think we might come back later in the night to do some work in here rather than head in now. What do you think, Jared? It's not just because I'm scared of bats. It is because we don't want to disturb them. So yeah, I think that's a good idea. At this point, we decided to leave the area, though luckily we would have the chance to investigate this room later on without distraction. Here, we thought best to head back downstairs and wait to lose sunlight completely before reaching out once again. During this time, we set up to perform an SD session on the main staircase, where the spirit of Robert Scott is said to linger, commonly throwing rocks at people. This saw Jared sit blindfolded while listening to a spirit box through noise cancelling headphones and relaying anything he heard come through, while I asked questions which he was unable to hear. We had also set up a REM pod and a Ghost Tube SLS camera in the next room over, where we had earlier heard noises, and right as we were setting up, the REM pod documented a change in temperature. Oh, got temperature going off. Sweet. Thank you for playing with that funny device. 
Additionally, we also had some capo activity occur on the staircase while setting up. I'm going to be sitting here, is that okay? Right here. Is it alright if I sit here? I'm here. Female voice. Uh, thank you. So my name's Amy. I'm here tonight with Jared. She's here? Who is she? Legion. Thank you for coming through and talking to us. My name's Amy, this guy's Jared. We've come a long way to visit you here at Margam Castle. Follow me. I will, can you tell me where you want me to go? Can you make a noise and I'll follow it? Up there. <sighs> here. Okay, I'll bite, I'll go up there. So who, who's up there? Can you tell me that? Can you move? Yes, I'm going. Oh my God, this is dangerous. I can barely see. Right, You're where, like dirt. Where, where are you? You're standing over there. This is real life. Okay. Hmm, I'm just going to look. I'm standing over there. Are you talking about me or you? I would love to see you. That there. It's not ideal. It's not. You'll find. If you could tell me where you want me, that I'll go there. Can you throw something? This week. Is there something special about this week? Here I come. Are you hurt? I'm not, I'm okay. I did just hear a noise down there though. Like is it your left hand? It is, yes. Please don't. That is kind of weird because I have an injury on my left hand at the moment. I cut a massive chunk out of my hand on a can the other day, like literally. We're not chunk. evil. Okay, that's good. And I was bleeding here tonight because I ripped the wound open. I just heard something. Was that you throwing something? It's not because I ripped the wound open. It's not because I ripped the wound open. Where did you come from? Australia. It's very far away. This is my wounded finger, my thumb. Can you tell me who I'm talking with? Where's the rest of them? It's just me and this guy tonight. It's just me and Jared tonight. Are you, are you a child or? Say no to them. Down there. Say no to who? Who is down there? It's Amy. Yeah, okay. That's my name. What? I just heard something up here. Stop. I'm just gonna let you know, I'm feeling like the ground's moving even though I'm on a stone staircase. Still. Well done. The dead. I can hear something up here though, like there's someone moving around. A lot. There's a lot? Like, what's up there? I'm getting twitches all over my legs, like my muscles are all twitching. Can you tell me what I can hear up here? Who's making that noise? People. Okay, there's people up there making that noise? All right. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. There's definite movement up there. It just sounds like someone walking around or moving around up there. It'll get better. 
I heard something down the bottom as well. I'm gonna just put my torch on and come down. Stop it. You don't want me down here? So I heard a little metal tap down here. Can you make a loud noise for me? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's okay. What's the matter? I'm just doing my best to be able to talk to you and sometimes it can be a little bit tricky. Are you able to give me your name just so I know who I'm, I am trying to talk to? Birds. What about birds? There's no birds in here, right? Because I'm scared of birds. Very scared of birds. I'm very cold around this area here. Is there someone near me right now? You swore. Like I made a promise or I said a swear word or like a curse word? I have to say. Do you like that Jared and I are visiting you? I was stationed. You were in the military then. Was this a war? Can you tell me where you were fighting? What the heck? I have no idea where that came from. Can you tell me what that noise was? I'm close. Yep, I just heard you. Are there children around? Can you tell me how old the children are? The 40s. The 40s? You're scaring him. I just heard two taps on the staircase then. You're scaring him. You're scaring him. Tomorrow. It'll be warmer. Do you like warm weather or cold weather? Who's the one that froze the rocks here? Do you think you could throw a rock for us tonight? You okay? Yeah, I'm getting like... My legs are all twitching, like all my muscles are twitching. And at first I thought it felt like the ground was moving, but obviously I'm on a rock solid stone staircase. I actually think it's just all my muscles in my lower body are all just twitching. Yeah, I'm getting all like twitchy legs. Jared mentioning that his lower body was twitching is actually something that can be seen here in the footage. While we cannot say this is paranormal, we have experienced this before while conducting SD sessions in the past, and perhaps it is a symptom of performing such communication methods or entering trance-like states. Hi right, guys, so we've moved upstairs because Amy said that there were a few words I said that seemed to imply that someone was upstairs. We've also been hearing like a lot of footsteps, unexplained noises and taps up here, just in between like while we were setting up. So we're gonna do something a little bit different because we've been hearing what sound like footsteps and things all around this space. We're gonna do an SLS session where I'm gonna walk through with Ghost of SLS. We're doing this on an iPhone 12 using the LiDAR scanner that's on the back of the device. So I'm gonna hit record now. So what you're actually seeing is the depth, depth map of the room and there's a table right here that I'm looking at, but I can also show you Amy, there she is. Okay, just getting a figure of um, the man on the wall. I'm not sure if that's, is that one of the, um, the previous owners, do you know? I'm not sure, but I did hear a ghost story or I was reading one today about someone in a picture that comes out of the picture or something. That's really weird. Yeah, I, I'm not saying like that figure is a ghost. No. CRM Talbot. Oh, that is one of the owners then. Yeah, the Talbots owned this until the 1940s. So this room in here, we were directly below where our base camp was, where we were hearing the footsteps. Is there anyone around? Anyone that was up here earlier? So if there is someone here, we'd love to see you. If you can walk out in front of us, we're not gonna hurt you.
We spent some time walking around using the LiDAR filter for Ghost 2 SLS, but did not capture anything of interest. At this point, since the bats had cleared out from the building, we took the opportunity to reach out within the nursery, which we had heard was one of the most paranormally active areas of Markham Castle. Here, we rolled on Ghost 2 Vox to see whether we could make contact with anyone who may still linger in this space, but we also set up a Ghost 2 SLS camera in the next room over to monitor for activity. Alright, it looks like they've got their seance table in here as well. Is this where we're going to be sitting? Yeah. So if there is somebody here and there's someone that wants to play, we would love that. Just come and touch the balls on the table, go towards the red light. We'll know that you're here. You can jump on the table, dance on it. We're not going to tell you off. Something over there then. And then I heard tap. something over there. It was like tap, tap. <gasps> I heard something squeak in here. Please tell me that was you. Okay. I think that's my chair. <laughs> I tell you what, that metal squeaking is not something you want to hear when you're sitting in a pitch black room. And remember, we are in a pitch black room. Like, you guys can see us because of the infrared light. We can't actually see anything. Don't make that noise again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, noted. I would love to hear from you. Maybe your name would, that'd be an excellent start. Can you tell us your name? Meredith. I heard Meredith. I heard a, a little kid's, little girl's voice maybe. I don't yeah. know what it said To me though. it said Meredith. Oh, thank you. Can you tell us your age? <coughs> that sounded like, like a child, like, Mom! Like, it was definitely someone yelling, yeah. Are you okay? Are you lost? <coughs> Noise over there behind the camera. <coughs> I keep hearing him from over I'm here. I'm hearing it as well. It's very dark over there too. It's like the darkest corner of the room. Can you tell us what's over there in that corner? <coughs> What about the toys on the table here? We've left some toys here for you. Can you touch those toys or play with those toys? Sandwich. Sandwich? Sandwich. <laughs> Are you hungry? Maybe the Earl of Sandwich is the Earl of Sandwich from the Hellfire Club. <laughs> Can you play with one of these toys on the table for us? <laughs> Are there some children here? <laughs> Seven. We've been asking how many children are in here. And their age. What else do you want to ask? Is there a little girl or a little boy here? The other side. What's the tester? Do you want to play a game? If you tell me what game that you want to play, I'll play it with you. I just all of a sudden got a weird feeling on my back. Like what? Like my skin's crawling. Like ants crawling on your skin? Like my skin doesn't feel good, yeah. Just all up my back. What do you think about this lady here? Are you touching her? I was, maybe. You're making me feel uncomfortable. Someone right behind me. It's like it's just sending shivers down my spine, you know, like, ugh, that ugh feeling. Can you come join us at the table? Maybe you can go up to the red light. Did you? Is that you moving the table? No. I just uh, heard the table literally the floor rattling. Woods maybe or something? No, it's the table. Uh, when I said, can you come around the table, I heard noises around the table and I could hear the table rattling. I just thought that was like the floor creaking. No, that's the table. That's definitely the table. Did you? Is that... Did you? Is that... Are you sitting at the table with us? In the last four. In the last four? Last four seats. Last four what? I had another tap over there. I'm hearing them all over, like just slight creaks as well. Are you moving around in here with us? What are you doing in here? Can you tell us where... <laughs> Can you tell us whereabouts you are? Literature. 
That's that not a, English. That was in English. And as I said that, I heard footsteps in that corner again. Yeah, it's that, that corner. That corner there. Should we put a camera on that corner? All right, can you show yourself to us in that corner now? Can you tell us who's in that corner? Have you been here for a long time? Do you know how long it is? I don't know. It's weird, it's gone really quiet now. Yeah. Are you still there? That is so weird that it's gone completely dead quiet now. That's my chair. Are you in the other room? I actually feel really cold all of a sudden though. Like it's funny because I get the cold chills when it's quiet and it's shut up, you know? That just sounded like it told us to leave. Do you want us to go? Do you not want us here? Burn them all. That sounded like it said burn them all. I don't think that's relevant at all to the history. It's just creepy. I'm just going to point that out. You know this place burned down though. Did it? What do you mean burnt down? I mean it's still well, standing. okay. There was a fire. There was a fire, yeah. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. us about the fire? <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> I, I don't think that's relevant. Too. Why, how did the fire start, maybe? Whose children are in here? I think the wind just picked up outside. Okay, it sounded like someone came in. Almost like when someone opens a door and the gust of wind comes in yeah. and the, the room expands, you know what I mean? Like the pressure, air pressure. Did someone just come in here with us? Who, who joined us? Let me show this you. This is the how it works. Off. You just need to move it. Well, that might have been me. I think that was you. <laughs> Can you tell us your favourite colour? My favourite is yellow. I feel like it always goes quiet when I ask a question. Maybe you'd rather answer my question. <laughs> What's your favourite colour? Bright green. Do you hear bright green? <laughs> Maybe they do prefer talking to me. All right, well, if your favorite color is bright green, there is a green light on that, um, the, that toy in the middle of the table. By the way, guys, sometimes we ask random questions like what's your favorite color just to, I guess, help test a theory about intelligent responses because if we just ask yes, no questions, all we're gonna be able to get is yes, no answers or and and maybe the yes or no we hear isn't in relation to what we're asking but if i say what's your favorite color and it says something like bright green that's very specific it's more compelling i think let's get some green oh you made a green so there you go there's a, gr a a bright green light there for you you can do that too try it it won't hurt you do you hear it doing over there then? I'm hearing a lot of noises in here. I put my mic. I put my... It's... What did you put? How many people are sitting at the table here with us right now? Four. Four. Yeah, I heard four too. Are they, are you children or are you, your adults? Can you describe the people that are sitting at the table here with us? No, no. 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 Why do you not want to talk to us? I'm getting all cold chills again now, like, but they're coming and going, uh, uh, it's weird. That is weird. At this point in the night, we decided to investigate a completely different area, moving outside to venture towards an old ruined abbey dating to the 1100s, where activity has been reported in the past. In fact, the entire park surrounding Margam Castle may be active. Yet, since we had already had a number of interesting moments within the castle, particularly centered around the Grand Staircase, we decided to leave a ghost tube SLS camera rolling in this space, just to see if paranormal activity may still present itself, even with no one living around. Oh guys, look at that moon. It's a half moon, but it's a big moon. It's sort of red. 
You ready for this, Jared? I'm ready. It's actually really cool. There's like, it's a half moon, but it's really big and close to the horizon and like orange sort of. It's pretty cool. So we're just about to leave the castle now. We're standing sort of right beside it. It's, it's absolutely magnificent. I love this place. <laughs> but we're walking down through the park towards the Margam Abbey. This abbey dates back to the 1100s and it wasn't sort of decommissioned till the 1500s. So it's super old. Now, yes, the park is haunted. That's the whole reason for this walk. <laughs> there could also be energy left around the abbey, right? But dark shadow figures are always reported throughout this park. Th this area has been inhabited for about 4,000 years. So although like Markham Castle isn't that old, the area and the land and the history here stretches back pretty dang far. So it existed even before the 1100s, right? Or as I called it before the 1100s. <laughs> what did you say 1147 and i was like what is that even a number <laughs> yeah i was reading the history i didn't even realize i said it. i was like oh ames this place was built in 1140 whatever and you're like did you just say 11 as jared and i were venturing away from markham castle our still goes to bsls camera picked up a sound that very much appears to be two taps in quick succession i do wonder if this could be something small and hard being dropped and bouncing on the floor just like a stone, which is said to be thrown by the poltergeist in this area. What do you think might have caused this? There are a lot of stairs here, even a lot of stairs outside. Oh my God. Dark shadows, where you at? Even with the light on though, I mean, I'm just seeing this. Maybe if I put my night vision on. Guys, I'm also rolling ghost tube just because... <gasps> what? What's that? What's what? what? In the bushes there. Where? Right there. I don't see anything in the bushes. What is that? A stick. <laughs> <laughs> what is it though? Is it? Oh, it is a stick. <laughs> There's a bunch of sticks holding up a baby tree. Cigar. <gasps> oh, you want to smoke. They're like close, but no, no cigar. I don't, I don't have a cigar for you. <laughs> Fucking mob. <laughs> Who is this that, that is here? Can you tell us that? Wait. I feel like I can hear waterfall. That's good for paranormal. A lot of energy. And he does always say that one of the theories is that water helps conduct it. Activity. I heard a bang. I heard like sticks breaking over here. Conductive activity. It's conductive activity. Whoa. Well, you can't just stop in front of me like that. <laughs> this is so awesome. So this stuff is like from the 1100s, <laughs> from the 1100s, right? 1147, I think it was. Whoa, it's so pretty as well. Wow, look at those arches, that's legit. Hello. My name's Amy, I'm here with Jared and we've come to just pay our respects. Is there anyone around that wants to communicate? Meanwhile, back inside the stairwell of Markham Castle, our still goes to SLS camera would document some curious activity. Firstly, the REM pod triggered, indicating that something was nearby. Shortly after this, just one of the cat balls begins to light up, indicating that it may have been moved. To me, this is interesting, given that this was the only time that the REM pod or cat ball triggered during this entire session. It was also interesting that they would both react to something so soon after one another, before continuing to lay dormant for the remainder of filming. But now, back to the old Margam Abbey, where Jared and I began to perform an EVP session, which yielded a curious capture. So... Is there anyone in this cathedral or abbey, sorry, with us right now? Can you um, come real close to us and maybe tell us your name or say something to us? Can you say a prayer for me? If you look up, what do you see? Can you tell us what year it is right now? 
how many people still linger? Linger? How many people still hang around here? And we're rolling. What happened to this place? Okay, chatter. I can hear chanting or almost like a melody. Here, we claim to hear what Jared describes as chatter and I describe as chanting. To me, replaying the raw audio file from the phone, I can clearly hear a melodic, deep male voice. It is faint, but I have enhanced the audio clip in the replay for you all to listen back to. I'm not sure this could be paranormal, but to me, it almost sounds like someone in prayer, which is of course relevant to the Abbey. What do you make of this capture? We are on the road and we are off to our next haunted location, which I think is probably the scariest place we have investigated all year. Wait, what? Where are you taking us? This year we have been going so hard with the haunted locations. We have investigated Waverly Hills, the Velisgarax Murder House, the Ancient Ram Inn, but I don't think any of those places are as terrifying as this one. We are off to Chillingham Castle for not one, but two nights. Oh my God, that place is so scary. Two whole nights? sake. Chillingham Castle is an impressive stronghold that has adorned the Northumberland countryside for hundreds of years. A true sight to behold, this fortress boasts a gruesome history and holds many dark secrets that have allowed it to claim the title of being one of the most haunted places in the world. My name is Richard Craig and I am Chillingham Castle's ghost hunter. Yeah, it started life as a monastery around about a thousand years ago, migrated into being a manor house, which was then destroyed by William Wallace in 1296. It became a fortified manor house after rebuild, and indeed housed Edward I on his visit up north to go and engage with William Wallace in 1298 for the Battle of Falkirk. The castle had constant evolution after that, it started with standing between the two earliest towers, the southeast and southwest towers. It grew to four towers, curtain walls in between, a courtyard in the middle, and it continued doing so until the Union of the Crowns in 1603. After that, it became a very palatial, stately home. Nearly a thousand years later, it's still here and still being absolutely amazing. So much has happened here. This castle was basically designed to keep the Scots in Scotland. It was the second line of defence for England back when the first Scottish War of Independence broke out. It's a big castle, strong castle. It's not a soft touch, it's very close to the Scottish border. There was a famous torturer here, John Sage. He was appointed by Edward I. He tortured in the region of 7,500 Scots during his tenure here. So much has happened in this castle, good and bad over the years has to have left a mark. I'm absolutely certain this is the most haunted, haunted castle in the United Kingdom, without a shadow of a doubt, and certainly one of the most haunted in the world, based on my own experience. Various rooms can also feel quite oppressive. I lock this place up in the early hours. To wander around it when everybody's gone, you're constantly looking over your shoulder. You really are. It never stops the hauntings of this castle, day and night, and there's always something that'll trip you up. It really is good. Torture, mass murders, pain, heartbreak and execution have stained not only this castle but its surrounding grounds and over the next two nights we will attempt to contact the many spirits that call Chillingham Castle home. I am a little bit nervous to come back to Chillingham. I've really been pushing us on this trip and we have been on the road for almost six months and I know Jared is worn pretty thin so I'm really hoping <laughs> he has it in him and he can hold on for two more nights in one of the most evil, most haunted places in the world. So we actually visited this place a few years ago and I don't think I ever really told Amy this but this place actually gave me the creeps. So you guys probably don't know this about me but I'm actually really squeamish when it comes to things like blood surgery things like that the history of this place and knowing about the torture and the things that went on here i think that adds to 
the way I feel about this place. I'm super stoked to go back to the castle. I am looking forward to the challenge. It's been about four years and the last time that I was here, it really challenged a lot of my beliefs surrounding the paranormal because we caught the craziest evidence. So I'm looking forward to it because I feel like I've come a long way, not only as a video creator, but as an investigator as well. I'm really not looking forward to this one. And what's worse is we're not just here for one night, it's two nights like i just don't know how i'm gonna go with this one i know so many other people have had crazy experiences at chillingham castle as well and i've heard some stories since jared and i last visited i actually have organized a call with some very good friends of mine and fellow investigators they visited here a few years ago and they're going to tell us about an experience they had where a table levitated before visiting Chillingham Castle, I wanted to talk to some of my good friends and fellow investigators. Brittany Crabb, who you may recognise from YouTube and the new paranormal TV show Mysteries Decoded presents Spirit Squad on the CW. And her brother, Jonathan Crabb, who both investigated Chillingham Castle a few years ago. We didn't know this at the time, but their past investigation would have some interesting overlap with our own. So I know that you guys visited Chillingham Castle back in 2018 and you stayed there for two nights. Can you tell me a bit about your experience there? When they say Chillingham Castle is the epitome of evil, it's the epitome of evil. No joke. No joke. And what we experienced, it changed us as paranormal investigators as well. It's literally hell on earth. Yep. Like it really is. There's so much evil in there. Like John Sage, for instance, you guys know the history with that. and. There's like demonic beings and entities that are all throughout the castle. The table levitating was in the Great Hall. We were in there with two paranormal investigators who were in charge of the ghost tours and they were kind of taking us around privately. This happened at like 3 a.m. It was very early in the morning. It was morning. very early in the morning. It was me, them two, and then you. And yeah. we were all kind of like in a circle holding hands. Mm -hmm. And it just happened four times. So the beginning of the table levitation, it felt like nice spirits because there are nice spirits there as well. But then as it kept going, you could feel that it was angry spirits, evil spirits. As this was happening, like when we were sitting at that table, this was a psychic moment I had. I yeah. felt a man standing behind me and I could see him in my head, but it's, it felt like he wanted to come towards me and hurt me. All of a sudden, after we like finished it, we're just like, I lost my voice, I can't talk. Yeah, I lost my voice. That's another thing. We got really sick after. So wow. we feel as if the spirits were using yeah. so much of our energy. We talk about this every single day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's a fact. We do. Amen. I know. Ask anybody. It's just like, yeah, it's like, oh my God, to see that. It wasn't like a, a table limitation. I feel like, like I'm talking about. Jared and Amy, you guys are together. Don't get separated. Why? Mm hmm. That makes it fun though. No, I, <laughs> I can't believe we're back. Oh my God, it looks just as like creepy as I remember. Like, it looks exactly the same, you know what I mean? Like it has not changed. Yes, it is still very intimidating. I am so looking forward to the next two nights. I just have Jonathan's last words etched in my mind as well. Do not split up. Remember that, Amy? Well, I'm sorry to say, I have some crazy things planned. Oh, no. We are going to be splitting up for sure. No. And it wouldn't be an Amy's Crypt Halloween special if we didn't do some crazy stuff, right? As night had now fallen, we decided to kick off our investigation of Chillingham Castle. We thought the best way to do this would be to explore the castle's grounds, which is said to be extremely haunted. We'd cover two areas of interest, the Monk's Woods and the Devil's Walk, but there would be a catch. We'd split up and be completely alone while doing so. We are starting our investigation right now. <laughs> So pumped. We're going to start off by heading to some of the scariest locations on the grounds of the castle because it's not just the castle itself, the entire grounds are said to be haunted. These places are freaking scary as well, but stay tuned because we'll be heading inside to investigate the scary places in the castle real soon as well in this video. Now, Jared, we're going to be investigating two areas. One is known as the Angry Monk Forest, <laughs> the other, the Devil's Walk. <laughs> The Angry Monk Forest is one of the scariest places at Chillingham Castle. A small dirt trail leads one through dense woods, where visitors have been violently attacked and even dragged through the trees by the spirits of angry monks. During times of war, prisoners would be executed in these woods, hanged from three trees along this path. Legend states that monks who took pity on those who were hanged ended up being executed there themselves. 
The Devil's Walk lies on the opposite end of the castle grounds and extends along the main driveway connecting to the castle. Today, the walk is graveled for convenience, but it was also a place where prisoners were hanged, then left to rot from trees as a gruesome way to deter enemies. To this day, human remains are still found along the walk, and many claim it to be an active area for paranormal events, such as light anomalies and disembodied footsteps walking right behind you. Alright, what do you rather? I mean, none of them sound enticing to me. If I had to choose, I would probably say Devil's Walk because it's a paved road. Who knows what you're going to trip over in there? Plus the monks attack you. Oh my god. Are we going to rock, paper, scissors or something? I guess that's what we've got, right? <sighs> Winner goes, gets to do the Devil's Walk. Okay. Ready? One, two, three, boom, okay? Okay. One, two, three, boom. Yes! Yes! Oh my god, I hate you. Yes, yes, yes. And Finally, there, I want one. Why is there like footsteps in this? I don't care, that's yours. Good luck to that. <laughs> oh my god. What happens if a monk gets me? Just scream out, I'll come. You will not hear me down there. <laughs> now that we're here and we're about to do this, I'm actually a bit scared. <laughs> I just started thinking like, what if there's a real person in there? Or I get dragged through the forest by a monk. I can't call you, you're not gonna hear me. I'm by myself. What if I just trip over and roll my ankle? I'm actually more worried about that for you, actually. <laughs> What do I do then? I just lay there until you come find me. I can't call you. There's no cell phone reception out here. I guess so. See ya. Oh my god. Have fun on the devil's walk. Maybe that's the worst one. Neither of them are great. Even while we were just setting up now, we were hearing shit in there. Go on, off you go. What if that's the monk? Isn't that what you want? Yeah, I guess. Okay. See ya. Team Jared, here we go. Now remember, I am in pitch black. I can't see a thing. Angry. <gasps> what the heck? Okay, I just got a word. Great. Jared's gone. And the first word I get is angry. Are you kidding me? My name's Amy. Hello. <laughs> if you are angry, why? Not at me, I hope. Okay, well that's a start. Angry, we just got. I haven't even walked into the forest really. I'm at the arch, which is quite ancient as well, very old, but I'm hearing noises. This is actually gonna test me. This is gonna test me. Before even entering the woods, receiving the response of angry through ghost tube genuinely chilled me to the bone, as the monks said to haunt this area are known to be aggressive and angry, and it almost seemed like a warning to me. Adding to my worry about entering the woods was some information Brittany and Jonathan had shared with us about this area too. The monks in the woods freak us out the most. The monks are like, you can see them standing on the branches of the, like in the trees and they just stare at you and they're very evil and aggressive and they drag people and it's happened in the past. Apparently, you know how people come in during the day for daytime tours, like families come in and stuff. They kept reporting and complaining to the Chilean castle staff that there's a man in the woods who stands there looking like a monk just facing the castle. He doesn't even move and he's scaring our kids. He's scaring us. And the staff were like, huh? A monk? Like, we don't have anybody standing out there. Okay, we'll go investigate. They were investigating this for like weeks or something. They had a camera set up and they never, it wasn't a real person. It was a ghost, it was the monk or something. And they kept getting complaints about this guy just standing in the woods, staring at the castle, dressed as a monk. Doing the devil's walk. I do have ghosts too rolling. I can't see a thing. I'm just like remembering what Jonathan said about splitting up. Don't get separated, Brady. Amy always does this as well. Why do I do this? Why? Okay, here we go. I really need to be careful where I'm treading out here. <gasps> Why is there a candle? It's like someone holding a candle out there in the woods. What the fuck? In this moment, I thought that I was seeing someone with a candle in the woods, which I was able to debunk as being a light on a distant gate. However, some strong interference was picked up on my camera's microphone too, something that has only happened to me in one other haunted location and never this intensely. What I didn't know at this time, and later learnt, 
was that this exact spot where I was standing actually has a ley line running through it and has been a place where past paranormal activity has been documented. I'm not sure the interference could be related to the ley line, but it does leave me wondering. We, had, we were just outside the castle walls in the woods near a ley line and I thought something was going on. So I got a pair of rods out and I thought this looks active. The K2 meter started going off and then I fired up a spirit box. The spirit box immediately told me to stop. We asked, why should we stop? And the answer that came out chilled me to the bone. And the answer was, the others. Now, when you're in the woods in the middle of the night and you hear the others, you down tools and have a good look around. That was scary. How? How? Okay, so if you want to talk to, to me, you just need to come up to these lights in my hand. If you do that, maybe you can select words. Even the night vision camera is struggling to see. Oh, it's insane. So there's the edge of the castle wall, guys. That is it. Beyond that, this is the devil's walk. We're doing it. Oh my God. How am I lost already in like two seconds? There's some pretty dark shit that happened here back in the day. Amy was telling me before that because Chillingham Castle was so close to the Scottish border. There were lots of battles and shit that took place here. I guess captured soldiers would be hanged and like their bodies displayed for the enemy to see. And apparently the bodies were just left hanging from the trees to rot. And so their bodies would decompose into the ground. On really cold days in winter, the ground pushes up the bodies and they're still discovering bones even till recently. So that's where I've got to walk down guys towards the hanging tree and that the monks. Obviously it's pitch black out here. The stories about this place are crazy and angry is like the first word I get. The monks are said to be angry as well. They literally attack people out here. I just heard something in the bushes. I just heard something out there. No, I'm outside, it could be animals, but it doesn't make any less scary. Is anyone there? I call out. Sad. Sad, oh. I know this is probably a sad place. I know at Chillingham Castle and the surrounding grounds, a lot of terrible things happened. I'm so sorry if you are sad. Can I have your name? Again, my name's Amy. I would probably be angry and sad if I met my fate out here as well. It's not just the ghost stories, like I'm also scared I'm gonna trip. Like I actually can't see a fucking thing. Like it is just black. Just to demonstrate, I'm gonna turn off night vision. There, that's what I'm saying. Like, no shit. Even the night vision camera is- I want to. <gasps> what do you want to do? Do you want to follow me? You want to come with me to the gate? Who is it? Without much context, the response of I want to seemed quite random, but something would later happen in this exact same spot that made the response seem all the more interesting. <gasps> what is that? Oh my god, what is that? Oh, it's a slug. It's a group of slugs, actually. What the heck? Just had a really weird noise out here. <gasps> so apparently the devil walk challenge is walk to the end of the gate. Walk to the end of the devil's walk and touch the gate. Put your hand on the gate. Do you want to come with me? Touch the gate, you can follow me.
Something's moving in the bush. Something's moving in the bush. Something's moving in the bush. I'm approaching the hanging area. Neil. <gasps> Neil. Um. Neil. I'm actually going to kneel, okay, in the dirt. I am hearing stuff. I got kneel, so I literally just kneeled. Maybe that's a prayer thing for the monks. Stroke. For me in this moment, I couldn't think how stroke may be relevant, but in reflection and pairing it with the response of Neil, which I initially thought may be related to prayer, I do feel like Neil and stroke could be in relation to an execution or beheading, as many people met their ends at Chillingham Castle. It was really windy before and now it's just eerily still, really still. Like there's someone behind me and I've got cold chills too. There's someone behind me following me. Can you show yourself to me? <gasps> oh my god. I'm hearing footsteps. Hello? Someone there? Hello? The heck? The heck, what the heck? Who is it? I don't like it. Okay. I'm just gonna walk away from the noise. This is where things get really scary too, because this is the hanging area. In this moment, I truly felt like I was not alone. Part of me wishes that I went to find out what had made these noises, but at the same time, I was not sure whether they were made by an animal, living person, or were perhaps paranormal. Oh my god, there is a blood moon. No way. Oh, it's humongous. It doesn't look on camera. Oh my god, I wish you guys could see it. I'm feeling like there's something in my hair. So I'm just walking faster. I need to get out of here. Okay, this tree, I need to go. Oh! Gate. Oh, gate? That's probably where Jared is by now, oh my god. Oh, thank fuck, and here's the gate. <sighs> Alright, I made it to the gate. <sighs> there you go. <sighs> what happens now? I think I'm walking under one of the hanging trees right now. See how it's fallen over? Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm out of the forest. I'm in the clearing. And the castle's up there where the lights is. Oh my god. I just came out of there. <laughs> I feel like something's gonna follow me out of there. I'm glad that is over. Oh, that's one for the books. I might just sit here and wait for Jared. Ames? Yeah. I want to. What did you get? I want to. You just got the word I want to? Yeah. You're kidding me? No. I had that exact same word in that exact same spot at the entrance to the Devil Walk where you're standing right now. Oh, you're kidding me. No. I, I heard... Show yourself. I'm here. We're here. We're here, we'd love to see you. 
To me, it is extremely interesting to receive the response of I want to via GhostTube across two different devices from two different people in the exact same place. It's difficult to say what this could mean, but maybe it was related to the final response received of show yourself, implying that maybe a spirit here would like to show itself to someone. Either way, we had accomplished all we could handle for our first night at Chillingham Castle, so we decided to get some rest and regroup for the next night of investigating, which would prove an even scarier challenge. So guys, we did it. We survived night one at Chillingham Castle, but that honestly was just our warm up. It was terrifying. I, hand on heart, I admit that it was very scary, but tonight we're pushing our limits even further because we're venturing into the actual castle. I'm scared. Crypt Keepers, we are starting the walkthrough. So many things have already happened for us tonight and I will share that with you and show you some clips because we caught it on camera. It's amazing uh, when we get to that area and I already have a ghost tube SLS set up monitoring a certain space because things have happened. Right now we're in the castle, we're in what is known as the tea room, an incredibly active, spooky spot. It's actually where the original torture dungeon is like enclosed beneath my feet right now. Kind of scary. Downstairs, there's a, a room called the tea room. Now, the tea room, it looks very nice and cosy, log fire going. Don't really let that fool you. That was the original great hall of this castle. And beneath your feet, when you're in the room, is the original torture chamber. Two years ago, sitting in the room, doing a pendulum session, there was just one chap I used to work with and I, and something came through on the pendulum. And we asked for a sign and a little wooden doorknob came flying through the air and landed on the minstrel's gallery. We dropped the pendulum, found the wooden doorknob, didn't know where it came from, and then walked into the chapel where a disembodied voice simply said, get out of my house. So, we did. Not only did the tea room have an impressive history related to the castle, yet we would also find out through Brittany and Jonathan that this room also has links to perhaps the most infamous occultists from England. Alistair Crowley. We were in the tea room talking to these two investigators and we were just telling them our stories and everything. But that's when we got into the, uh, the talk of... Alistair Al Crowley. Yeah, and I was actually familiar with his with a few of his books, which I read, and one book was based on, on rituals that he did and brought all these weird other spirits. It's like, if you want to put it like this, and it's very popular enough, imagine like he opened the upside down world yeah. and all the... Mm -hmm. Demogorgons and all these other demonic things came into our world. Like that's the best way to put it. But right? where so. he did the, where he opened the portal, had that seance. He showed us, yeah. He showed us. So in the tea room, you know where the balcony is to the chapel? Mm -hmm. It's literally like you're on the tea room level beside the balcony area, like against that wall. And it's that, that's where he did it. Oh, these stairs. I have gone up millions of stairs, guys, in the past two days. Wow, look oh at this. Oh my gosh. There's artifacts everywhere we look here, literally. And all the everywhere. rooms are so grand, like these chandeliers and that. Which, by the way, those chandeliers were flickering before, like off camera, like on command. <sighs> this is another spooky spot. This is known as the chapel. And... Did you hear a bang? Mm. Okay. I just heard a bang. And... And... A lot of stories about the chapel. Now the chapel, the chapel's a place of rest, but three skeletons were found. Three grinning skeletons were found under the floor. The ghost of Eleanor, a very playful ghost, reputedly to be eight years old, her skeleton was discovered in the top corner of the chapel. She's very playful, uh, and I think she likes to uh, join in, and it's gone freezing behind my back. I yeah, I just yeah. heard that. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> Hi, Eleanor. It's like ice behind me. Like I said, she likes to play. She likes to pull people's hair. And if you're sitting in the chapel, she likes to draw on your back. Lately, it's been super active for whatever reason. I don't know what the catalyst's been. Guys, I already have Ghost Tube SLFs set up in the chapel to monitor this space while we do the Ghost Tube walkthrough. We were doing our interview just in this room. I saw something like a shadow move through here. Richard, who's our guide tonight, who we were interviewing at the time, also saw something, plus some orbs here. We heard the craziest footsteps we have ever heard. So much so, I was like, that's gotta be a real human. But we called out to them, no response. Just 
loud footsteps. We all got chills, we all got goosebumps. It was quite scary. It was insane. It was like our most active interview ever. I mean, we don't expect to get anything during an interview because we're not actively trying to reach out. But this just like, things kept interrupting the interview, like after thing after thing, like, we had the music box go off, we had candles go out, like it was just insane. It's so much so, this was all caught on camera as well, mind you. So I'm just gonna roll some of the footage. In the churchyard over the road, in consecrated ground. Hello? Hello? Is there supposed to be someone in here? Well, that's something. We all sort of said hello and we got no response yeah. whatsoever. Was that a real person? I don't know, but the hairs are standing up on the back of my neck now. Yeah, I feel a bit... The yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so before we were rudely interrupted by phantom footsteps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the chapel. Um, sorry guys, we've, we've just got a, we've got a, um, we've just had a figure come up the stairs and go, go behind you, Jared. Really? Yes. What? I actually thought I saw something in there earlier and I oh, didn't say no. because I didn't want to be the it, person. It, uh, I literally didn't want to be the person that was like, oh, there's something in here. It just came up there and, and went oh, that way. I've got all cold chills now. Yeah, I've got pins and needles in my legs. If oh, you can come wow. in here with us. Wowzers. My name's Amy and this is Jared. And you probably know me. Oh, freezing cold. Now, it's you? freezing cold. Yeah, it's freezing <laughs> cold. It's so cold. Yeah, it's freezing <laughs> cold. <laughs> I like, I'm like freezing cold now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got it all on my legs. Yeah. That's so weird. I don't like turning my back to it now. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even got started yet. I know, this is, okay. This right. is the best interview of my life. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if there are any spirits in the chapel, please come out to play. We'll be able to see you. I've put a camera that um, if you feel comfortable, you can show yourself to. This though, this is the great hall. Oh my God. Wow. Indeed, this hall, the Great Hall, never ceases to amaze me. We get so much happening here. Clothing being nipped. That happened tonight on the ghost tour. Somebody in here complained of the clothing getting pulled and eventually being nipped. In this immediate area that I'm standing, just a couple of Saturdays ago, in the space of half an hour, mid-afternoon, three ladies came up to me and said, I've just had my lower legs touched. So one mentioned it, and they didn't know each other. Another one mentioned it, and I thought, this is, this is pretty good. We've had people getting touched, objects moving, but the most amazing thing in this castle, which never ceases to fascinate me, flying orbs that you see with the naked eye. I had a scary moment last night on a ghost hunt right behind me when I got a forearm grabbed by hands unseen. This is the area we were standing right here doing the interview. So Richard was standing here and he's told us so many things about the Great Hall, so many experiences he has had or other people have had. And even while we're doing the interview, this first candle here on the table, it went out on its own. Maybe that was normal and natural, but my flashlight or my torch on this table also turned off on its own. Just a further note, the batteries in this torch were brand new as I had just changed them for this interview. The torch can also only be switched off by physically pushing down a button on its base. Additionally, we didn't realise this at the time as we didn't see the exact moment that the flashlight turned off, but it just so happened to turn off just as we began to talk about one of the most infamous ghosts of Chillingham Castle, its sadistic torturer, John Sage. We keep, keep asking John Sage to come forward. Sometimes he comes through very quietly, very sheepish. Now, Jared, why don't you sit on that end chair? This one? Yeah. Why? That's where uh, Brittany Crabb was sitting when the table oh, levitated. For Joey King. <laughs> no. Shout out that... to Brittany Crabb and Jonathan. But yeah. I don't know if I want to sit there. <laughs> I will, though. I'm going to do this for Brittany. Can you please levitate this table? <laughs> wow, it's very fancy. Can I just say, guys, as well, like the candle going out, 
I did note that it wasn't, it didn't drown itself out. I hadn't been burning long. No. And um, Amy's flashlights, like. I just thought I heard a voice. I don't know if I heard it in my head or in my ears though. I know that sounds weird. So my name is Amy and tonight I'm here with Jared and we would love for you to do anything that you can to show us that you're here. If you come towards this device, that's right near Jared's head, you should be able to talk to us. Maybe you can give us a word, give us a sign. Just as I had asked the spirits to show us a sign, in the next room over, Ghost to Bear Celeste maps out something that I have never seen it do before. It simply maps a face and nothing else. You'll notice here that the app uses advanced facial recognition algorithms to map human faces as well as bodies. So why would it map just a face floating in the air? I don't know if Eleanor is around, I would love to make a new friend tonight. And I don't know if it was you who made a little noise on this side of the room earlier, but we heard you. Oh, that's like a REM pod <gasps> one. Did you hear that? That was like a tap on the table. Thank you so much. That's like a REM pod <gasps> one. Did you hear that? That's like a REM pod one. Did you hear that? Can you tap again? You right? This night is already more freakier than last night. Like, walking through the woods. Just, yeah, I'm already, I'm already getting cold chills. and It's not even cold in here. We're going to go walk up the stairs towards King Edward's bedroom. If you want to come with us, we would love that. Be keen on that. <laughs> oh no, that, that's actually my least favorite room. Really? This is one of the, the rooms that's the darkest for activity. <gasps> I said bats. Why I'm scared of this. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you oh making God. me do this? Why? Oh my God, I just totally screwed. That was like this close to my freaking face, man. <sighs> I didn't think I was gonna scream tonight. Anyway, this room is weird. They do say there's some dark activity in here and people get grabbed a lot in here. The King Edward room has an oppressive feel to it occasionally. Just last week, one of the gauntlets on the table in front of everyone. These are basically steel gloves. One turned over and fell off the end of the table while, we're, while we watched it. How on earth did that happen? People complain of being pressed down on their shoulders. People complain of ankles being grabbed and touched, scratched. The door can slam on its own. Those of us with long hair, hair pulling as well. The only name we have is Key. Key cannot walk crawls around, we've seen him on an SLS camera, we've interacted with him, and he likes to touch ankles, and it scares people senseless when this happens. Oh, Ames, aren't these the metal hands that Richard was telling us about earlier? Yes. Apparently so these rolled off the table on their own unexpectedly during a ghost tour. My name is Amy and I'm here with Jared, and we would love for you to make your presence known. Can you give us a sign that you're here? Move something, touch one of us, give us a word on the device that we're running. I was over here. Now over there. <laughs> My floorboard's creaking. Did you hear it? Every hour. <laughs> Literally every hour that thing goes off 
at like three in the morning. I just saw an orb. With your eyes? With my eye. With your eyes? I feel like my camera was pointed over there. It was just like a light went through my eye like. It was only my left eye, I feel. That's weird. I want to see one. I don't, I don't know if I would have filmed that. It like went up the wall. Thank you if you're showing me lights. I would love to actually see you. So this is called King Edward's room, right? Yes. Why is it called that? Because it's King Edward's room. <laughs> he came here and he did spend time here before defeating William Wallace, who, you know, is depicted in Braveheart, uh, one of the Scottish kings. Um, so was his room. So was also the room. There's a story here about... That, that chair just moved. As in, I heard, I didn't see it. Like someone just tapped on it. As in someone sitting in, on it? Yeah. Yeah, about... Yeah, about... Why don't you sit on the chair, Jared? <laughs> oh my God. <gasps> Paul. Paul? That could be relevant, I don't... P-A-U-L, I don't know. Okay, go sit in the chair. Oh my God, why do I have to sit on it? Legend has it, a bunch of children were murdered in here, chopped into little pieces. And that was after they had to watch their parents murdered and burned alive in the courtyard, which we will head very shortly. Maybe that's where a lot of the darkness comes from. Like, killing a bunch of kids in this room, it's so messed up. If you're going to make me sit here in the throne under the creepy roof that may or may not have bats on it, ah, oh, you're going to at least let me wear the crown. Da -da -da -da. No. Da -da -da -da. I don't like it here. I just heard something right near you. I'm really cold all of a sudden. Why don't you knock that crown off of his head if he's not deserving of it? Edward, what do you think of me sitting on this seat and wearing your crown? Same, 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 same. Wait, 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 wait. Come here, come here, come here. Film me, film me, film me. I just felt a tug. Probably because um, you've still got your hat on. You've still got the crown on. Not on my hat. I felt a tug on my back of my jumper. I know, but it's like reminding you. You need to take that off. I don't have like a bat on my back, do I? I can't see. Hang oh, you've left me in no light. There's a staircase here. <laughs> there's no... There's no bat I felt on something you. pull on my hoodie then. Well, touching in here is common. That was so weird. I'm not even joking. Do you reckon it was telling me that I... <laughs> Maybe. It's like, don't take my crown. It's not even a real crown, though. I just felt the floor rumble. Like, this is a wooden floorboard, and I just felt it like... <clears throat> like vibrate. Like there was someone standing on the same floorboard. Okay, we're going to leave again. Can you pull on my jumper? <laughs> Queen. <gasps> queen? Queen just came up. That just said queen. Just said queen. Well, we're just in the king's room. I don't know if there was a queen's room. You'd assume so, right? What's a king without his queen? Queen? Who could you be? Can you share your name, please? As we were discussing whether Queen could be a significant response, we also captured some activity over in the chapel on Ghost Tube SLS. If you listen closely, it sounds like there is some movement in the empty room, almost like someone shifts or drops something heavy, which also occurs right as a little orb flies through view. Yeah, let's go down. Finish. Just said finish. We're not finished yet. We're, we're just getting started, yet. I hope. I hope you're still gonna hang around because we're not yeah, we're just getting started. We're not we're not ready to finish yet. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Getting so many names now. Paul and Jeffrey, okay. And Queen. And Queen. Can you what come? Is that? Um this is a how would you describe this to someone back then? 
This is something that you can use uh, to talk to us. Digital portrait device. Keep trying to touch it, you might be able to make it make noises and sounds. Is it in here? Yeah. It's actually quite a nice door for a torture chamber. Brother. 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 Bros. Okay. We're bros. We're chilling. Yeah, okay. Brother. Okay. I'll go in first and I'll lead the way. Bros. They're probably not saying they're your brother. <laughs> Are you looking for your brother? Why is it so deathly cold in here compared to anywhere else? This freaks you out in here, right, Joan? Yeah, I mean, this rack. Yeah. Obviously, these are just um, reenactments, guys. These aren't real. This is just, it's a lot to be in here because you know that this kind of stuff happened here at the castle. So seeing things like the rack or skeletal bodies hung up, it's eerie. Or the chopping block here, execution block. I think like this one here, where you boiled in. Is this a boiling pot? Yeah, that's gross. Yeah. Buried. Buried. Where are you buried? They keep finding skeletons here in the castle all the time. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's like skeletons hidden in the walls or underneath in these chambers that aren't opened yet. I don't know if these are just props, but speaking of skeletons, there's some bones right there. I think they're just prop ones though for the, for the dungeon. Richard was telling us today that this is not the original torture chamber, but many of these items here um, do have stories behind them, but the original torture chamber was actually under where the tea rooms are now. But people here, you know, a lot of people have claimed to interact with a man named John Sage, who's a very infamous torturer in England. The torture chamber, all those instruments of punishment, death. I keep asking John Sage to come forward. But John Sage, maybe he's repenting for all the atrocities that he did over the years. Sometimes he comes through very quietly, very sheepish. Other times, if he's having a bad time in his realm, he'll come through a bit harsher and maybe move things around. We've had chains. We had a full-bodied apparition in the torture chamber two weeks ago on a ghost tour. 24 people on the ghost tour, 22 saw it. I saw it. The two that didn't were standing behind the Iron Maiden. I had a REM pod on the table beside it. It went off just after the, the apparition disappeared, followed by some beautiful sparkly orbs. Some weeks before that, in the same place, we were having a little bit of a vigil, nice and quiet, 11 of us in the room. Chains started clanking, almost like your archetypal ghost that you might see on Scooby-Doo or something like that, but this was for real. We turned round, put torches on, and saw all this equipment moving by itself. It's heavy. It can't just move by itself. But that was the torture chamber. Even if this isn't like the original torture chamber, maybe John Sage or the other spirits are attached to the items. You know what I mean? By like this guy. Shh. I just heard voices. Look inside the bloody Iron Maiden, guys. This thing is a piece of work. Hit like now if you want to see a Jared Cam inside the Iron Maiden. What? Fuck <laughs> off, no way. Look. Look. We're Look. looking, I can see it. Where are we looking? Well. Oh. Where do you want us to go? Where do you want us to look? John Sage, are you here? Was John here tonight? Oh. What? I'm getting a cold breeze coming through here. It's so cold right there. Why would there be a breeze coming through here though? It makes sense for a breeze to be coming from this way. This is the courtyard, guys. It's quite a magnificent, stunning place, but it is steeped Female. in tragedy. Is there a woman here with us?
So one of the stories here, guys, is that a bunch of people, prisoners, were burned alive here with their children watching on. Then their children were taken away and killed themselves as well. And I have heard that footsteps... Monster. Monster. I was just going to say, there's been footsteps coming through here that people believe is John Sage because the torture chamber is just through here. So that's a very strange... That's a spot-on response. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, monster, I mean... You have to be a monster to yeah, do that. I don't know what more you can do to be classified as a monster. Last time we were here, years ago as well, I was recording like an intro in the day here and I picked up the creepiest freaking voice or scream. I don't know what it was. It was so dark though, right here. Or supposedly the worst torturer in the whole of England. Uh, in the whole of England. In the whole of England. Guys, we are in the witch's room, or the still room. This is where a pantry ghost is uh, said to haunt. And these, these are all letters and things that have been taken from Chillingham Castle and sent back because people believe they've been cursed by the witch. Is that the witch like? Right That's there? legit her, yes. Wow. That's not even the craziest thing in this room. What? Oh, of course. There's yeah. a legit dungeon here. The dungeon. Sorry, I did see this today, yes. I forgot it was in this room. Let's go in. Hello? Um, the dungeon's been there since medieval times and contains what's known as an oubliette. An oubliette, of course, comes from the French oublier to forget. This was a hole in the ground where people were just dropped to end their days. Certain times of day when you go in this particular room, the oppression and sadness that you feel is really quite something. And this can be in the middle of the day, sunshine coming through the, um, into the room that's right outside the dungeon, but the dungeon is pitch dark. This is one of the scariest places, I think. Anyone claustrophobic? Oh gosh. Watching from home. It is pitch black too. Oh. You right? <laughs> Squeeze in. Well, it was a jail cell, right? So it makes sense that it's so tight. It was also an oubliette. So if we look through the floor here, down here, basically this is a long drop down to the floor where there's actually human remains. There's human bones down there still to this day. Horrible, horrible way to go. I actually have been looking forward to coming back here because this was actually a really interesting spot last time we were here. Yeah, I think this place, this room, sort of challenged some of my beliefs of the paranormal because we did spirit boxes in here. And I remember specifically thinking at the time, oh, we didn't really get anything in here at all. And then when I reviewed the footage, I was listening to the spirit box, there was clear as day responses coming, coming through that we got in here. And I was like, how did we not hear that in the moment? And one of them sounded like a swear word and even like a woman being tortured. thinking about spirit boxes and maybe they're kind of like EVPs where you don't hear them in the moment but then they're documented onto say audio after the fact you can hear them. I don't know, leave me a comment what you guys think but I also want to make note of the graffiti in here. So people were counting down and tallying up the days that they were in here and I was also reading that these scratch tallies in the wall they start to fade so they used to be deep and then they get lighter and lighter with each scratch and it's speculated that was the prisoner losing strength right before they died yeah these ones are hate hate are you kidding I just got me? the word hate oh i'm so sorry apologize i just she did just did i'm again i'm sorry i just spent my whole day apologizing but i i do hate what happened to you in here it's horrible these are deeper and then these ones are lighter and we also learned about these markings here, the double V. It looks like a W, but it's two Vs. That was a symbol to ward off evil spirits. So I wonder if there was paranormal things happening back then, such as there is today, or they were just superstitious in a way. Having now walked through the castle, we decided to focus more heavily on select areas, starting with King Edward's room 
where Jared earlier felt as though he was touched on the back. But because we also had a lot of ghost tube responses come through in the Great Hall, we also left a ghost tube SLS camera in this space to monitor for activity. King Edward's room is claimed to be one of the more haunted and darker areas of the castle. And from the moment we entered the room and began to set up, we captured activity, with our REM pod triggering, noises occurring, and orbs appearing in our footage. Bring your cat balls? No. Should we have? Too late now, I'm not going back down. Oh, hello? Thank you. Um, what the heck? REM pod's gone off, there's noise behind us. Um, what the heck? Um, what the heck? Alright. Whoa! Um, okay, what are we doing? I don't know, but I need to sit down, possibly. Their drums do not sit on these. This is going nuts. Okay, we're about to do an EVP session. Thank you if you're trying to communicate with us and sitting at the table with us. That is so freaky that the REM pod is just going nuts. I don't want to be the one sitting next to the REM pod. Do you want Nah. <laughs> I don't want to be the one sitting next to this chair, I swear there may be bats up there. <gasps> With so much happening, we decided to hit record on an EVP session to see if we could pick up on any voices. My name is Amy and I'm sitting here with this guy named Jared and we call out to the spirits in King Edward's room. We know there's someone in here because someone grabbed Jared. Can you tell us who this is? Can you tell us whether you consider us a friend or a foe? Who was it that moved the glove, the metal glove on the table? <gasps> and can you move it again? <laughs> You're going near that red light, that's where the gloves are. Maybe you can move them for us. Can you tell us how long you've been here for? Are there any children in here? What was that? Was that you? No. There was like a knock on the table. Can you make a louder noise for us? Can you just yell something really loud? I feel very unnerved in here. I'm just gonna play this back now. Oh my God, I thought there was a shadow behind me. It's my own shadow. Okay, we're just gonna play this back now. My name is Amy and I'm sitting here with this guy named Jared. And we call out to the spirits in King Edward's room. We know there's someone in here because someone grabbed Jared. Can you tell us who this is? Sound interference. Can you tell us whether you consider us a friend or a foe? I have never picked up audio interference like this during an EVP session. This struck me as being eerily similar to the interference that I picked up the night before in the Monk's Forest, which was recorded on different equipment. It's a common thought that spirits can mess with and manipulate electronic items. So do you think this, paired with the REM pod triggering, could signify the presence of a spirit? Interference again. Can you make a louder noise for us? Can you just yell something really loud? <gasps> oh my god. The bench just moved. I feel and then the REM pod went off. I'm just gonna to turn this off. Yeah. Play this back. That's a separate chair there, look. Was it? What? Who was that? <gasps> what was that?
There's nothing above us, we're at the top. That was like a chair moving and then footsteps. There's a balcony here, but you can't get up there. This was all pretty crazy. First, we hear a tap come from the chair right beside me, which is followed by the REM pod triggering, indicating something was nearby. Then we hear what sounds like heavy footsteps and someone moving furniture across the floor, coming from right above us on the wooden gallery, where many claim to sight shadow figures looking down at them. <gasps> oh my god. <gasps> oh my god. Who was that? <gasps> what was that? Who was that? <gasps> what was that? Fuck. All right, we know you're here. It's a yellow too, that wasn't even just the green one, it was yellow. So this is what is above us guys, we're right on the top of the building. What in the world? Isn't this where Richard said there's a crawler that touches yes. people's ankles? Yes, but that was up there. I know figures are seen up on there. I'm getting goosebumps now as well. For the second time tonight. Can you move something in this room for us, please? I know I'm asking a lot of you. That's so weird. What was that? I have no idea. I feel really uneasy in here actually. That literally had to be something up on that wooden gallery up there. How do you even get up there? There's not a ladder, is well, there? Well, we you? can't get up there. And there's no one up there. There's no one here. I know people have seen figures up there though. Can hear bats too, which also equally freaks me out. That was not a bat. That was footsteps no. and furniture moving. I'm too scared to even breathe. <laughs> I'm like holding my breath. <laughs> I'm holding you. I've like got my hand on your leg. I'm like, Ooh. we're rarely like this, like huddled up together. We don't like to do public affection. <laughs> we're like <laughs> cuddling up to each other because we're so scared. My face look weird. It's this line here. What is that? But like, I haven't shaved. Do you just tonight. have a gap in your beard? What the heck? Is that always there? I don't know. Is it? I wouldn't have shaved like that, surely. <gasps> can you make a loud bang for us? Or can you just push one of those, what are they called? Gauntlets? Well, don't the break gloves? them though. Push them, push them to move them, but don't make them fall off the table. Don't break them. <gasps> what the heck? I'm trying to find my torch. Oh, it's right there. Okay, let's grab this. Yeah, let me see your face. Yeah, you have a hole in your facial hair on that side. How? I don't know. I, is something I actually, in my hair? Guys, you got... Is something in my hair? No. No. Okay, I just felt something... Guys... I just felt something touch I my hair. I shaved my entire beard off about a week ago, but it's grown back. I haven't... That shouldn't be like that. I don't care about your beard. I just felt something in my hair. There's nothing there. <laughs> don't. We did spend some more time reaching out in King Edward's room, but at a certain point it felt like whatever or whoever was in the room with us had left. So we made our way back downstairs to regroup. On our way down, we collected our Ghost 2 Best Celeste camera from the Great Hall. This camera did not pick up anything of interest besides one single click, which was shortly followed by a rather deformed looking figure that appeared for just one single frame of the recording, leading me to believe that it was not a false positive, but maybe someone just passing through. We now made our way down into the castle's depths to investigate its torture chamber, a place where many have had paranormal interactions and some claim the infamous John Sage, the castle's sadistic torturer still lingers. But as soon as we entered this space, I noticed that a battery on one of my lights, which had barely been used that night, had been completely drained. This was dead, this has died. And the light I've got on my camera has the same type of battery. And, and that one's not fine. Dead. That's actually the light we've been using. This is like, I've just pulled this out. Dead. We now set up our REM pod, multiple cat balls, and rolled our cameras to reach out again using Ghost Tube Fox. My name is Amy and I'm here tonight with Jared. And we call out to the spirits of this torture chamber 
or even John Sage or anybody else who may be here, we would love to hear your voice. Can you come close to me and share that with me? Please don't be scared. There was a lot of voices there. And at the end it said gone when they stopped. Blah, 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 blah. Gone. gone. Yeah. I also heard York, which is a city here in England. Can we have a name if just one person at a time we would love to talk to? So someone here called John, John Sage. Can I just say, before you ask, can we hear from John Sage or whatever you just asked, I thought it was a few different voices. I was like, obli et et, obli et. Really? That's what I thought I heard. Could be clutching the straws. On the rack. Maybe we should move to one of the um, devices, torch devices, I mean. Thank you. If you're touching that, maybe you can come up towards this red light here. So we should. That noise was horrible. That just scared the crap out of me. Like, what would a torture there it goes again. dungeon sound like? Is that where you want us to go? Yeah, come on. Can you push that ball off? Watch out for the ball on the floor. Watch your step there. You need to. What do we need to? Tell me what we need to do. <gasps> Who's there? Something over here just cracked or moved. Yeah, something did. What was that? I thought I heard... I thought I heard someone say sit down then. But I don't want to sit down on any of the chairs here. Because they've got but, spikes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what happened in this room or with these devices? Can you tell me where we are? Thunder Pond. Are you English or are you Scottish? Boy, that's uh, To take your skull. Indeed. This response is not one we heard in the moment, but pretty creepy considering that there is an Iron Maiden right there with us. Then after this comes through, we also capture a light anomaly fly downwards towards my legs. <laughs> Can you tell me about this device? What was this device used for? Oh, I just got a real cold draft come from out that, is that a window? That's not a window, but whatever it is. I think that goes to the old moat, maybe. Dude, I'm getting ice chilled as well. Ice, ice. chilled? I'm so cold right now. You're afraid? You're afraid? You're, no, well, sort of. <laughs> um, yeah, I just said you're afraid. Should we be? Oh, that's so strong, that cold breeze. I can't, I can't. How many people died at this castle? If this is John, which of these devices is your favorite? Pass away. Pass away. You just said pass away? I think so. Is that what happened here? Or on these, some of these devices. If you were hurt here, we're so sorry to hear that. Oh, I'm feeling really, really cold now. Dude, it's so cold. It's like I don't wafting out of here. Why do we feel this way? All the time. 
I just thought it said it might have been John. That's what I thought it said. You have to replay that. I don't know. No. Is it John making us cold? John, you got to come through. You got to you got to talk to us, mate. It might be John. It might be John. Find a face. Something about, face. about the face. There is like one of those face mask things with the metal and the mouth and the spikes up here. Oh, can you find it? It's up near this other camera. Did you just touch me? No. I just thought something touched my back. Did you just touch Amy? A girl I heard a girl. Girl, yeah, girl leaving maybe? I ain't leaving. We're not leaving, we're uh, here to talk to you tonight. We're here to hang out. Did you touch me on the back? Yeah. Oh my God, it's even got bunny rabbit ears. That is a face mask, that's horrific. There's also like a gas mask or I don't even know what the heck that is. Can you tell us what that is? Hello. Why don't you walk up to that red light? If you want us to be afraid, that's what you gotta do. Go touch the red light. With the night wearing on, and since Jared thought he may have heard Oubliette come through Ghost Tube Box, we decided to move our investigation to the dungeon, where many people were locked up to rot and pass away. Here we set up to perform an ST session, with myself sitting in the dungeon, blindfolded and listening to a spirit box through noise cancelling headphones, while Jared asked questions which I was not able to hear. We also set up a Ghost Tube SLS camera in the courtyard to monitor this space for activity while we reached out. Okay, I'm ready, Jared. All right, Amy is ready. I guess we'll start as anyone. Threat. Else. Threat. Can you give me a name. Who's in the dungeon with us right now? Tudor. Can you give me a name or a number. How many people? Door. I'm I just heard a man screaming. I'm at the door. Do you want me to leave? I'm going to walk out. That better i feel like my foot is being moved what this moment is pretty weird as i remark that it feels like something was moving my foot this is something that can be seen on camera moments before light do you want me to turn the light off three four i was just asking how four. many people are in there look over where Look. I'm looking, I'm looking. Can you tell me what happened to you in here? Come in. I just got mad cold breeze all over me, Jared. That's interesting. It's weird that you said come just as I started coming back into the, um, into the dungeon. Locks. Locks. Why don't you, do you want me to Very. Shut, do you want me to shut the door? I don't know why anyone would want to be locked in here. How do you feel being in here? Like, what, what, what does this place mean to you? Please. That please response sounds Help. similar to what we got last time. I wonder if that was a woman's voice. What can I do to help you? What can we do? Help me. What can I do to help? Leave. You want us to leave? Both of us? Why? Stop it. Why do you want us to leave? Why do you want us to stop? Who, who wants us to leave? Who wants us to stop? You're disgusting. I don't mean any harm. I'm just here to find out more about you. Below. What's below? Can you tell me that? Body. <gasps> Body. There's bones down there. Literally, there's bones down there near below Amy right now. What happened to the body down there? What happened to that person? Eaten or eat it. Don't know if they got eaten down there. I think they fell on spikes or something, didn't they? Can you give me a name? 
Please come in. You want me to come in? There's not that much room in there though. Why do you want me to come in for? What do you want with me? Get her. You don't like Amy being in there? Were you interacting with us tonight or have you been down here all night? She? What about her? They're John. They're John. John could be relevant. Leave. Keeps telling me to leave. I am going to go out and we're going to see what happens. Oh, Jesus. How's that? Is there anybody in this room? I'm behind you. Me or Amy? Who's behind me? I'm very cold. That's what I'm feeling, not what I'm hearing. I feel like Amy's maybe entering that trance state that I've been telling you guys about because she's speaking very softly now. Oh, I'm hearing screaming, Jared. That's not... A lady. What happened to you? Jared? Yeah? Are you there? Yeah. Oh. I'm hearing... I heard the screaming. Truth be told, this SE session was quite intense and I had the feeling that someone was there trapped. After I heard a scream, I thought that I should end the session, but wanted to leave the space of some nice words for the spirit. But I'm getting the feeling that it wasn't like telling us to leave, it was like they want to leave. So if there is somebody here and you can hear my voice, maybe it is possible for you now to leave. I'm getting full body chills right now. I hope you can find your peace and you just know you don't have to stay here. We then decided to head back downstairs to the castle's Great Hall to reach out to the ghosts of Chillingham one final time. But we also wanted to include Richard in this segment of the investigation, as he seemed to have built a close relationship with the spirits during the many years he had investigated the castle. I'm so glad we did this too, as Richard was amazing and some of the things we experienced here were really cool. Are there any spirits known to me in the Great Hall this evening? Indeed there are. Right, Rods, can you please point to the closest spirit to me? Just to the left of Amy. Oh, hello. Friend of Jonathan. Peter, are you in the room with us? Yes. We got him. Peter, are you with Douglas? Thank you. Is it all right if we continue with this investigation? Indeed it is. Thank you so That's much. That's very good. Right, you've got, got some new friends here, which you might have seen before. Might you come through? Thank you very much. And we'd love it if you showed yourself or interacted with any equipment that, that we have. We're here, we're all friendly. We don't mean you any harm. We'd appreciate anything that you could do for us. If you couldn't make a, a noise, I've already heard some, or come close to some of these things on the table. Eleanor, if you're with us again tonight. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Thanks very much. Thank you. Eleanor. Where was that? It seems Still like it's here. in here or again tonight. Oh. oh. Again tonight. Oh. oh. Eleanor, that's probably you. Or it could be Peter. Eleanor, if that's you, if you can come past here, maybe trigger a music box or something for us. That would be superb. Oh. Oh, thank you. That was on command. Orb, 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 orb. Orb. Eleanor, is this you? Or is it somewhere else? Eleanor, if you're here, these are new friends from Australia. Oh, there it goes. Oh, did that go off? It just lit up, yeah. Did it? Eleanor, if you're here, are you around where Amy is? You can rip. Oh, fine. Pull somebody's hair or clothing. Looks like she wants to. It's lit up a few times. Right, okay. Could you maybe go and stand beside Amy? You can hold my hands if you'd like. Well. Wow. Oh, thank you. I've come a very long way to make new friends. Okay. 
Do you maybe touch Amy's hands? Oh, did you hear the flick on my shirt? I heard that, yeah. I heard it, yeah. Did you hear it? I did, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is, yes, I had my shirt grabbed last night right here. Thank yeah. You. Was it in the yeah. same spot? Same spot. Literally, oh I God. heard same that spot. and I was did like, that's the weirdest thing because there was a click. Yeah. on your shirt or it, like it, it around was, here it was somebody f you know flicking my shirt just right. just here it's so weird wow oh oh are there any other spirits in the room that would like to join in the um <gasps> that was behind you i down the far end it was like a boom maybe a door <laughs> Is there someone down here? Do you recognise this bear, Mr. Darcy? I don't know, you like this bear, Mr. Darcy. Oh! Yes! She's down there. Wow! Was that you, Eleanor? Oh, I've got all chilled now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you want to come up here, Eleanor? Just for some context here, we were attempting to reach out to Eleanor, a young girl, and felt like we were getting some intelligent interactions from her. The music box that you hear trigger in this moment is not the one at the end of the table where we are standing, yet another that is set off by movement at the opposite end of the table. What we capture next is pretty creepy and to me, makes me question whether we were actually interacting with Eleanor at this time. Do you want to come up here, Eleanor? What on what? earth was okay. that? Was that a growl? Did you not hear it? I heard yeah, it. Yeah, like a. Yeah. Kind of noise. Exactly it. Yeah, heard it. I don't know how to describe that. Uh, In this next clip, you will hear us reach out to someone named Peter. This is the name of the spirit who Richard believes interacted with Brittany and Jonathan, levitating a table for them years earlier. Peter. I'd love to meet Peter. You met my friends Brittany and Jonathan a few years ago. They talk about you every single day. Peter, are you going to do something with the table again, please? Was that you setting off the music box? Come and touch the device in my right hand. Thank you, thank you, thank you, wherever you are. I've got a feeling that this is Peter. Yes. See that? No, just lit up. So we're getting electromagnetic spikes. Can you show us red? Um, I also feel like I can hear the table cracking. None of us like, are touching the table. Like wooden. Like, yeah, like there's pressure on it. None of us are touching it. Can you show us red? Um, I also feel like I can hear the table cracking. Um, oh. <gasps> oh. 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 <laughs> okay. Thank you. I guess that's Peter. And red orb here. You're seeing orbs oh. down here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is good. Right. Peter, if this is you, can you please do that again with the music box? Please, for Brittany and Jonathan. If you could do that, that would be absolutely marvellous. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much. We appreciate that. That's exactly what we like to see. Wow. Oh, Would it keeps going. I know. Would you be able to move something on the table? I'm sure that is tricky and we appreciate the music. That's really good of you. Wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so I'm guessing there's more than one of you here. Unless you can move really quick. Peter and Eleanor, Peter and Eleanor. okay. Thank you and to both of you. There was a knock. I heard a tap, yeah. Like maybe near the armor? Yeah. And again. Oh, there, yeah. Yes, I heard that. Yeah. Well, Peter, if this is you, and I'm sure it is, please give us a further sign. Could you maybe engage with, with Jared and maybe pull his clothing? 
touch him or something, I'll make the room go cold. There's Hearing movement it. back there for sure. Could you do that again for us? This is Halloween after all. Okay. Can you take a seat with Jared? I feel really cold all of a sudden, like the goosebumps filling in like I had when we were doing an interview. Yeah. Just up my legs and up to my, my chest and down my arms. So I took a seat with you, all right? And again, so yeah, maybe. Can you show me an orb, please? Can you make some light for me? Anywhere near Jared? Anything? Whoa, hey. Yep. Okay. Peter, if you're beside Jared, and you can, if you could swoop past and give me an indication on the device in my right hand, please. Only if you can. Ho, 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 ho. Right. Can you do that again for me? We love another. <gasps> oh, yeah, God. Yep. <laughs> All right, okay, so someone just passed from this door to the table, really. I'm done with the chair now. Sorry, that's me. All right, spirits of Chillingham. Can we feast? Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. Right behind, right behind us again. Yeah. Yeah. Can we have some music, please? Thank you for the music. I'm going to tap, if you can tap back to me. That's even better than tapping, thank you. <laughs> there is a stuff going on here. Thank right. you. <laughs> if you move one of the benches and we get a scraping noise, that would be marvellous. Wait. That is you. getting louder. That is getting louder. What is in there? Okay. That's just Amy. Oh wait, no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. It's pointing the other way. Yeah, oh, sorry, my bad. Are you bad. coming with me? I was gonna go look at where the noises are, but you can come with me. We continued reaching out for some time and it seemed that the activity, which had been pretty constant, had now tapered off. So Richard suggested we try reaching out using a spirit box run through a portal to see if we could get any vocalizations through. Is Alistair Crowley with us? Alistair Crowley, you're a friend of George Montague Bennett, right here in the castle. Do you like to come through and talk to us? Brittany. Oh, that said Brittany. Brittany. That just I said Brittany. Peter, is that you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Do you remember Brittany? There's a loud tap back here as well. Okay, you remember her? She's my friend. Can you say hello to her? You hear that? Yes. Yeah. Amazing. This response is pretty wild to me. Britty is not a common name or something you generally hear come through the spirit box. It is also a nickname of our friend Brittany, who visited the castle years ago and who we had been speaking of all night. This to me shows that the spirits of the castle could still have memory of meeting her, or at least are intelligent and possibly had listened to us throughout the night and fed us this name to make a connection. Either way, this interaction was very cool. Brittany. 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 